Today on the first segment, we're talking about April Fools. We got so many people who were either laughing or very, very mad crying, at us. Crying also, some. Also, we out in New England, hanging out in Boston, hanging out with the Midnight Riders, eating chili, doing what you're supposed to do as a cool again. That's right. In the second segment, we bring in Mr. Save the Crew, Mr. Steal Your Election, <laughs> Mr. Running for Every Office in Ohio, the one, the only hilarious comedian friend of ours, Travis Irvine. Travis, you got anything to say? I love the Cooligans. Yeah, <laughs> that and more on this episode of the Cooligans. Hey, this is Alexi Lawless. There is nobody in U.S. soccer that is more important than the Cooligans. Yeah, baby. <laughs> well, oh, I got dizzy again. <laughs> welcome to the show. Hello, Woo! everybody. Yeah, we, this is, uh, we're just every week. I feel like I, I just can't wait to get back in studio. Uh, when things happen in soccer, I'm like, guys, keep it till Monday, okay? <laughs> Yo, slow it down, Yo, okay? Relax, you can, bro. You Maybe on a Tuesday morning. Let us, <laughs> give us a chance. So welcome uh, to the show. We are excited to be here. Yes, we, we were in, uh, in New England, in Boston. Yes, right. Bean Town. Beans. Having yeah. beans. We performed underneath or in front of, across the street from Fenway Park, <laughs> a.k.a. I, the, the house Aaron Boone collapsed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you said it like you really had no idea as where far we were. as no, because time the, and space. You're like, where you know I was is? in front of, it's on top the st of. The stands creep out over where we were. We performed under the Green Monster. Under, where no one else was there, <laughs> just us and the janitors. Uh, well, we were doing stand up. We were doing. We were hosting events. We were going to Revolution games. Yeah, we're just being like you know, like soccer celebrities. Soccer and celebs. Shit. Uh, that's it was pretty fire though. Uh, yeah, we had it. We, no, we hosted an amazing event in Rhode Island. We did. We did. So uh, Project Goal putting. Putting kids out playing soccer and giving them tutors right. and stuff. By, by force. Whether they like it or not. <laughs> you, Just stealing basketballs from a basketball you, team. You're learning soccer and you're, and you're reading books, uh, you, kids. And you, and you better like it. <laughs> so welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Christian Polanco. And I'm Alexis Guerrero. We are your favorite stand-up comedians. Yeah. That hosts the funniest goddamn soccer podcast yeah. that you've ever listened to. Yeah. <laughs> That's Y-U-H. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and it, it's not only the funniest soccer podcast that you've ever listened to. It is also what Alexis Guerrero's, Bruh it's the gulliest. <laughs> oh, okay, there. Aye. Okay, there, gully man. <laughs> Pulled out the shirt. <laughs> Changed it in a phone booth. <laughs> Somebody find me a phone booth. Yo, you know phone booths are mad gully because that's what you do with your needles. <laughs> I know, right? You don't use the phone. The phone part of it is just to deter other people from using it yourself. <laughs> okay, you're doing drugs in your own piss and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gullier than that. That's, again, over gullied. You over gullied, sir. Uh, yeah. Yes, man. We we did have a, a good time. Uh, Speaking of overgullied, we're here from the OG <laughs> podcast stage seventeen. That's right. Sprat. That's right, man. This is uh, we got a new little backdrop. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not watching on YouTube, watch it on YouTube. I know, please, because my nephew thinks we're failed YouTubers. <laughs> That's right. We, <laughs> we look like failed YouTubers. Yeah, yeah we're to children. He doesn't understand what a podcast <laughs> is. I'm like, no, it's the audio, and he's like, no, I've seen it. Nobody watches. I'm like, no, we're you know, not YouTubers. That's not where we put like our most effort <laughs> into. Uh, we're <laughs> yeah. He's like, no ninja, and I'm like, stop talking about ninja right now. <laughs> I okay. He's look. a YouTuber. We're podcasters yeah. that also put their podcast up on YouTube. And he's like, "Well, not that many people comment." I'm like, "All right, you're eight years old." It's <laughs> it's interesting because we're we're almost we have to deal with like the you know how uh, when somebody calls somebody you see on Instagram a comedian. And it's like, no, that's not exactly. They're, they're not comedians. They're not comedians. They're like, they do. But they're funny. They're fu no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to sort of defend ourselves in like the digital space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, well, no, we're not exactly YouTubers. No, we're not we're YouTubers. Just... <laughs> so, uh, but we did have a good uh, time uh, out in uh, in Boston. We did a bunch of stuff. And Oh, I, my God. Dude, the New England area was great to us. Yes. Uh, I mean, I think the, the, the event... Which was awesome, but really the worst part of the whole thing was the game. I mean, <laughs> well, no, it was fine. The game was fine. <laughs> the um, uh, we got to hang out with Shaka Hislop, dude. We got to just ball out with Shaka Hislop and his beautiful daughter. They were great. Yeah, they were awesome. And uh, we did like this like VIP event where like some of the some of the people that were at the event got there a little early and they got to do basically like a, a Q and A with us. 
Yeah. And also some guy named Shaka Hislop. Yeah, some dude who played in the World Cup named Shaka Hislop. <laughs> if you don't know, Shaka Hislop, he's on ESPN FC. Yeah. He, uh, he was the goalkeeper for uh, Trinidad and Tobago yeah. when they made it to the World Cup. He played in the Premier League uh, for played West FC, Ham. FC Dallas New, for a while. FC, yeah, Newcastle. He, he ended his career in FC Dallas. As most uh, soccer players do, uh, but the some FC Dallas fans would say he ended his career in Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> well, the um, uh, he played for West Ham, Newcastle. Uh, what was the other team? He played another big. I team. I think that's it. No, he played somebody. It was another team, a pretty big team he played for. But uh, great dude. Yeah, nephew of Shaka Khan. It's a real thing. Didn't make that up just now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that's why you come to this show to yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. to get absolute truth, deep seated uh, facts. <laughs> But uh, how great was he, man? He was one of the nicest human beings he's, I've ever met. He's a sweetheart. Funny. Funny? Thought we were funny, so you know I like him. Yeah. Also, you know what I noticed about him? Massive hands. Well, there's a lot of goalkeepers. But, I mean, he put his hand on your shoulder. It looked like <laughs> it, it looked like there was just nothing but fingers. Like <laughs> someone found a finger with 30 well, he's knuckles. A, he's a big man. He's a big man. Big man. <laughs> because, big uh, man thing. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we just had goalkeepers on uh, last week. Dude, we're just covering goalkeepers. Goalkeepers. I mean, this is an exclusively comedic goalkeeping podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of those exist. <laughs> <laughs> but um, w- we were sort of making jokes about how goalkeepers are obviously like kind insane. of insane human beings, yeah. and he was. Uh, uh, w- I, I, I. It's easy to say this. He's what the, he's the nicest goalkeeper I've ever met. He's a he's one of the nicest soccer players we've ever met in our lives. Yeah, yeah, and he was so cool. Like. We were billed along with him, and obviously, it's like, yo, Shaka Islop, and yo, hey, you can also talk to the Cooligans if you want, <laughs> but no one's like, oh, you guys are comics, that's cool. Everyone's like, what was it like to play in the World Cup? <laughs> Everybody. And that, uh, That's why I'm, I'm realizing this, that when we're around soccer players, usually, uh, and maybe this is why people enjoy hearing us talk to soccer players, because usually the, the questions that people come up with to ask soccer players are pretty derivative. It's like... Really yeah. the same. It's kind of boring. Kind of boring. Same question. What was it like for this? What was? Who's the best player you ever who's played the against? Best player? Yeah. 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 Okay. It's like, yeah. well, who cares? It's All the right? same seven. <laughs> like, same. Messi. That's it. Yeah. The answer to the question is always Messi. Yeah. <laughs> Google Google that. So- Google your favorite soccer player, and you'll find a handful of interviews where they answer the questions you're probably going to ask. Exactly. And they're all the same questions being asked in every interview. Uh, so when we're there, it's a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we kind of get under their skin a little bit. <laughs> we treat them like normal people. And he actually treated us like we were as big a build stars as he was. Yeah, he that was. was pretty flattering. I think, but we, we sort of, we have to earn that with a couple, a couple burns, a couple jokes. Oh yeah, no, we get in there. We can't just walk in a room and people start respecting us. No, no, no. no. We take it by force. They're like, dance for me, clown. Yeah. Okay. I respect what you do for the, these next 30 minutes. Yeah. No, <laughs> we, we earn that by burning the place down. <laughs> But it was uh, pro- and Project Goal, uh, the, the people who ran, who ran the event, the people Darius, Opal, everybody. Every, I mean, it was uh, Nelson, Alex. I mean, these guys are great. Just so fun. Everyone was so welcoming, and we always talk about like the the stuff that happens at the grassroots level to help uh, soccer continue to exist. These and are those guys. These are these people. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and we couldn't have been happier to be uh, a part of it. It was. Legitimately, so so fun, and you know we've we've hosted benefits and stuff like in soccer, uh, like benefit things, related things, and this was by far the most like straight up like it was like a comedy club audience. I mean, it they really were, was. They they were there to support soccer, and uh, they weren't there to support us initially because they didn't know who we were. They did not care uh, that we were there, but, <laughs> but but as the night went on, they were like, "Yo, you guys were funny. You guys made the event so fun, like yeah. stuff like that." So that, that really made us uh, really. And proud they offered and happy. us the event next year, right on the spot. That's how much. Fun uh, they were having, which is kind of cool. So maybe we'll be back out there. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, Alexis is negotiating right on the podcast. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll be right. <laughs> um, but uh, it's super fun. And uh, so, w- real quick, before we continue, to, we'll talk about the rest of the trip because it was really awesome. We have to. Uh, yesterday, we're recording this on Tuesday, April second. Uh, you're listening to this on April third, most likely. But it, it was April Fools. Uh, April Fools. And and uh, Christian had an idea. You got this idea early because I remember you asked me. For the photo, I did. Yeah. So uh, a couple. I don't. I'm not one of these people that's like, oh, it's National Hot Dog Day. We should do something. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm not one of those. Yeah. You would like, think you would have food on your mind <laughs> yeah. and looking at your calendar yeah. and seeing like what what food what food that? related holiday is coming up so I can what, celebrate. What excuse? Yeah. What excuse can I give? <laughs> it's, it's National Donut Day. I gotta have a dozen of them. Exactly. Uh, uh, but no. But you asked me for this photo a while back, and I remember I kind of took. I remember taking this photo kind of ironically. Yes. I remember saying like I saw. Roger Bennett on the street. Yeah, uh, Roger go, Bennett of Men and Blazers. And I go, hey, 
you met a blaze, right? And he goes, yeah. And I go, he goes, yeah. I'm, he was in a hurry. He's like, I'm on my way to record now. I was like, cool. I have a soccer podcast that's better than yours. And I said that. He goes, it probably is. And I go, yeah, it is. <laughs> and he didn't say anything. And neither did I. And he goes, do you want a photo? I was like, actually, I do. <laughs> and in the photo, you could see me kind of about to laugh. I took a couple real quick because he was in a hurry. And uh, he was actually kind of nice. I well, I uh, yes, we obviously we joke around. Yeah, but they're I'm they're I'm sure they're perfectly fine people. Yeah, we just don't like what they stand for. Right, right. <laughs> we just don't like the show. But they, they seem like he seemed like a fine, very individual. fine, very fine people. Anyway, um, and I didn't smell any alcohol, and uh, so I took the photo, <laughs> and then uh, I kind of just sent it to the group chat, and it just stayed there. Is that where you found it? I found it through going back in the the info tab on the info button on the uh on our chat on like yeah, just the group a, chat not the group chat just the regular just our text messages on oh, iPhone. okay so you can it goes and keeps all it stores all the media yeah, yeah, as, yeah. As, like the more you go back so i was like at because you couldn't find you were you're never you were never gonna find it i was never gonna look for it yeah <laughs> so uh so i ended up finding so this was just and if you see the photo uh this is what two years ago yeah. you are uh, your face is gigantic yeah i'm a to, much bigger person you're a then. much bigger man so yeah. i would have thought some people would have realized that this was a joke and this that, that is clearly an old photo because it's you look also oh, low key my hair is parted in the other direction oh my goodness i mean they, it, it's like an m night Shyamalan film <laughs> there were some there were all the clues were yeah. there <laughs> there's a twist at the end also the main clue was that it was we posted this on april 1st uh i hope nobody no got it. <laughs> some people congratulated us which is like ew ew yeah so this is what happened so I, i'll if you didn't see the tweet uh this is basically uh this is the the tweet let me just pull it up so so we basically just announced that we uh, were working with, with Men in Blazers. So we said, uh, quote, we are excited to announce that we are joining forces, forces with Men in Blazers to create some crossover podcast and video content this year. Can't wait for all the GFOPs to see how gully we can be. <laughs> Hashtag Cooligans and Blazers. Which <laughs> we thought, <laughs> Which uh, you like, wrote it, but I, I was like, this is so this obvious. This is so over the top, ridiculous, and silly. The I, only thing was if, like, we said we were replacing the Men in Blazers and the show is ours now. That would have been the only thing that would have been, like, even more obnoxiously, obviously false. Yeah, obviously false, but people, I think our fans would have been like, yeah, that's right. Good for you guys. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> they, probably, they probably just mushed them in the face. <laughs> so, Give me that goddamn blazer. <laughs> Come on, you know, get in here. Let me yeah. touch your hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm touching that beard, dog. <laughs> you can't say nothing. How Sue's doing? How's your mother-in-law doing? Oh, we got to talk about that, too. We got to talk about that, too. Uh, so... Uh, so the reason we're talking about this is because I we both had the presumption that everybody would be like, ha ha, yeah. hilarious, a lot of sharing, and also like we didn't have any intention of answering anything. We just thought we'll leave it out there. People will realize it's a joke. Exactly, we're good. Like any like when a, when a company puts something out that's real good, they just leave it. Yeah. That's what I thought we were getting. We did not. We did not get that at all. <laughs> what? We what? got a little bit of vitriol. <laughs> we got so we got uh, congratulations. That was, that was also the 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 funnier part because we were getting so many people that were like, "Congratulations! What a great move for you guys!" Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm excited for your. And I was like, "Yo, are you really are fans though." Because <laughs> Jillian Sackovitz, I had to text. Yes, she put congratulations, hand clap, something. Yeah, else. yeah. And I just texted her. I'm like, "Have you looked at the calendar today?" <laughs> And she wrote back in all caps, LOL. She's like, I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> She's like, I remembered our conversation because we talked, yeah, about, we talked like, about them. Yeah. She asked me, like, where does that stem from? And I told her, like, how we feel. And she was like, but I just thought maybe something happened in the background. <laughs> and then she wrote underneath, like, does gully really mean most? Does gully most mean gullible? gullible? Yeah. yeah. So funny. So we that we got a lot of those, right? A lot of people got it. Robin Seguini got it. Like, yes. you know, Nicole Hack got so it. So th those were great. Anybody yeah. got it. <laughs> so those were, and people were making jokes and all that stuff. That was awesome. Awesome. Uh, but it really was. You there, got a personal DM. So there were people who were d distraught, destroyed that, you know, they're fans of the show. And if you listen to this, this is an interesting thing. And, and I think this joke was a, a good way to figure out who listens to the show regularly yeah. and who, like, is just following us on Twitter to see what our antics are. Yeah. Right? Because the people that were just like, hey, congratulations, or oh, this is, or, oh, this is weird, but cool, or, like, whatever. The people that were genuinely congratulating us, I'm like, all right, you don't listen to the show. Yeah, you <laughs> clearly don't you know. You don't, which is fine, but you don't. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but this, I got a message. Uh, and, and so uh, this is with his approval. He asked, he, he said, he was like, you got me. It's cool if you call me out on it. So this is Matt, uh, Matt Leffler. Who but he a, did post something on Twitter that was very like, okay, not sure how to feel about this. Exactly, yeah. He did post that like on Twitter, and then he hit you up in the DMs yeah. personally. Personally, because he was like, 
man, I just needed to talk to you right now. <laughs> yeah. because... I got to get this off my chest. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I just want to read a, a part of the, uh, the DM that he sent me. He goes, hey, dude, as a fan, I want to support you guys and want the most for your success. I find the Men in Blazers crossover, quote, unquote, interesting. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> you guys actually got me to stop listening to them, and they were a total gateway pod for me. So, so I read, he wrote a little bit more. But basically, that I, he was just like, I don't understand what is going on with you guys. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I I'm, see you've changed, <laughs> you see, and yeah. I want to support your who you are. <laughs> what, I mean, to be honest, that is the most endearing thing. That is the sweetest thing. And also, that's a real fan. Yes. Someone's like, look, I'm going to try. <laughs> you know? So this is, his name is at Northwood Guitar. He's a Sounders guy yeah. uh, in Seattle. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I felt... So bad. Uh, I literally, I saw this, and I'm like, what did you respond? I just say, I was like, hey, Matt, it's an April Fool's joke. And I said, sorry. And then he goes, uh, uh, he goes, uh, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. I didn't even realize what day it was. I was trying to be so supportive, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh man, I was trying to be a good person. <laughs> but I really hated you yeah, guys. I was I like, <laughs> wow, I said some really disrespectful stuff in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we want people to know we would never do that unless we get paid very well. <laughs> and we'll let you know why. <laughs> we will secure the bag of but, all bags yes, if we do something We'll like be that. very clear about what yeah. <laughs> the sentences are. I mean, look, it's uh, you know what? Th this was uh, it was actually really sweet, right? The it was super sweet. The fact that it hurt people's feelings mm -hmm. made me like, oh, wow, they actually really care about what we're doing and they 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 hope that we maintain like our yeah, we scruples don't sell out. you yeah. know <laughs> yeah 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 so. wait hold on we got scruples <laughs> by the way my favorite cereal growing up oh uh, scrupulos <laughs> so good but uh really really awesome and to the people who who uh who, I don't know if if people I hope you got the joke right I, yeah. I don't hope this is not the first time you're hearing uh about it but uh but thank you for the support thank you for the hate because they chose that you care. Yeah. And and thank you for the love. Uh, yeah. And my favorite was on, on Instagram, we put it up as two stories. We put a screen cap of the of the announcement. That was, dude, that and was then a, the next one was the gotcha. And people you could see them responding to the original <laughs> one and then the laughing while crying face or oh you dude, got me. That that especially on Instagram because it, it was so fast. Yeah. Right. You see the, the you joke. see it in real time. Yeah. It was uh you saw that like the, the yeah, you would see the first message and then the second message of like, oh you got me. But it was like a trap, you know. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah, like yeah. <laughs> it was like a great way to catch people and like, oh, you don't, you you don't really, you don't, you're not really a part of all yeah, this. Yeah, like Mel D. Cole, who just found out about us when we interviewed him. Yeah, yeah. He wrote like, yo, congrats, and then the next one, smiling, measuring, he's like, <laughs> you got me. So, uh, super fun. That was a. Uh, I'm glad uh, I made it happen because Alexis wouldn't. Have, I, the photo is what did it. The photos would did it. The photo because the, if it was just the text, people people would have been a bit more skeptical. But they see the photo, I'm like, oh, they are actually together. Yeah, uh, and it's springtime, kind of <laughs> like yeah. I'm wearing the right coat. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's pretty even. All right, all right. So you know, a lot of these brands and all these other people doing doing uh, uh, April Fool's jokes. Bro, but who does it better than us? Who does it better than us? Huh? That's really the main point. Uh, all right. So uh, before we continue, just uh, uh, got to give a shout out to our sponsor for today, SeatGeek. SeatGeek repping the show. Absolutely. SeatGeek, my favorite thing about SeatGeek, you download the app, it knows where you are, and it tells you the events that are happening around you. So let's say you want to go to one of these, uh, you know, one of these ICC games or one of these men's national team games, right? Yeah. They're going to tell you if it's a good deal, not a great deal, or when to buy based on their color coding. They got the blue, I'm sorry, the green, the yellow, the red. And it's like, yo, right now, it's hot. Maybe that's it. Maybe you're like, yo, I want the ticket anyway. I'm going to get it, even though it's not a great deal. It's an event you really want to go to. So we're definitely not talking about a men's national team game, <laughs> right? But, yo, it's like they know well, where you're How about the women's national team games coming up? Dude, there's, a couple, there's a couple qualifiers a couple, coming up. Uh, no, not qualifiers. Qualifier, you know what I mean. Friendlies. Uh, to prep, uh, to prepare for uh, the World Cup. Uh, you know, our, our, our homie Ali Krieger is playing in some matches. So Finally, right? Got it, that cap again. Exactly. She needs just two more to get those hundred. Yeah, Go see her hunted. in her. Get her last two caps to get uh, to one hundred. Hopefully, she's on that World Cup squad. That'd Yo. be a dream. That'd be so awesome. Raise uh, those fruit bowls. But make sure you download the Sea Geek app and use the promo code Cooligans. It's so easy to use. We've used it for a ton, a ton of games that we uh, we we go to. Use download the Sea Geek app. Use the promo code Cooligans. You will get ten dollars off your first order. Bro, you're gonna get ten dollars off a ticket.
like it. So let's say you want to go to an MLS match, right? Yeah. They're the official partner of Major League Soccer. That's right. Partner. So partner. You were a partner? They, they're the official. <laughs> right? Let's say you want to go to an MLS match. You've never been. You never use SeatGeek. You download that app. You put in Cooligans. Not only are you going to get a great deal on an MLS game, which is already pretty inexpensive, very affordable. Yep. But, bruh, you're getting a tenner. You just took $10 off that. You know what you could do with that? You could buy yourself a third of a hot dog at Yankee Stadium or 17 <laughs> of them at the Atlanta games at Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, the hot, hot dog currency right now is very off. You yeah. know? <laughs> hot dog price is very affected by real just, estate. <laughs> just fluctuates, you yeah. know? <laughs> it's very important. Uh, so go uh, download that Seeky Cap. Use the promo code COOLIGANS. 10 bucks off your first order. All right. Uh, so let's go uh, to a couple things. So we did... Uh, go to the New England Revolution match, uh, That's and, right. and this was so we went. We were in Friday in Rhode Island. Friday in Rhode Island for that event. Beautiful hotel, right? Lovely. By the way, after party, hung out at a rich man's house, a very very nice mansion. We like hanging out at rich men's homes. <laughs> That's what we do. Okay, <laughs> Garber, call us. So these guys got Bluetooth speakers all over the place. Who else you know in suits host a, a gala? A fundraiser yeah. with, with mans like Shaka Hisla. That's right. And then you go to a rich white dude's house, <laughs> and we take over the Bluetooth. We play a reggaeton and a yo, little bachata. Yo, 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 run that Bluetooth. Yeah, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> what you using? What's your password, my guy? We got this Sonos. <laughs> so, uh, actually, Sonos runs over Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. Not, not Bluetooth. Okay. Well, we took over that, too. <laughs> so, then we went. And the next day, we go. We got shows in, in Boston, right? We got comedy shows. We're performing all through Boston. Shout to uh, Ryan Donahue and and all the folks at Bad Bad Show and the Bills Bar Comedy. Thank you yeah. for everything. Uh, but we're like, yo, what, what should we do during the day, right? Exactly. And then we Google some stuff, and boom, <laughs> New England Revolution plane, and we met. <laughs> Literally, not, none of this none happened. Of this <laughs> <laughs> what are we, we don't so know I'm, how to get to an MLS game all I of a sudden? I it, <laughs> and uh, it said, no, we reached out to. Uh, we asked Jeeves, and he told us, <laughs> yeah. hey, you should go out to these New yeah. England Revolution games. We, we called our cousin, Alta Vista. <laughs> So and uh, we we met the Midnight Riders and they invited us out here. That's right, for Matt uh, Matt Zit I, I don't I, Zaitka or Zitka I don't know yeah. how to pronounce Nick Swartzen. Pro, uh, <laughs> what is Spar- Swartzen? I don't know. Swartzen? You sound, it sounded like you said Fartzen. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Couple of nicknames. Um, uh, Matt is the president of Midnight Riders, which is the supporters uh, group uh, for, for New England Revolution. Revolution. Yeah. Uh, great dude. We met him in Dallas, uh, and it, everything sort of worked out. And we uh, you know we were in Rhode Island. It made sense to go to. Oh, also, it was a chili cook-off. You think I'm going right. to miss a, that? It was a sixth annual chili cook-off, yeah. uh, Midnight Riders, uh, which is really cool, right? We got to have uh, uh, probably like 12 different types of chili, oh, and we amazing. got to vote uh, on which one was our favorite. Some people give you more than others. One lady did ropa vieja. Yeah. Matt's mom. Matt's mom. Yeah, I mean, ropa vieja chili. <laughs> and it was awesome. Yeah, that was so cool. It's like she knew I was going to be there. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, she probably did. He told her. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but we had all the different types. And she of- was all like, oh, my God, you're Cuban. <laughs> like, she's all worried. <laughs> Great job. They made chili. They have their own uh, beer. The yeah. Midnight Riders have their own the brand scarf. of beer. Uh, support, it's called Supporter Scarf. Supporter Scarf. It's uh, great beer, too. It's incredibly welcoming. Always fun, man, when uh, when supporters uh, invite us out and we get to hang out and uh, and talk talk shop, talk soccer. And yeah. and I feel like hanging out with the Midnight Riders, especially, which is a, a supporters group that's been around since 1995, right? So a lot of history. So a lot of these people are have, were kids when th- this uh, supporters group started. Yeah. And they, I was telling uh, uh, Matt, and uh, shout out to Benny. Uh, Benny, great dude. Who, who is the other capo? I don't know what his role in in uh, Midnight Riders is exactly, but he. Uh, I was telling him like like you guys have been around the club so long. You're sort of like the, you you maintain the history. You like you're like uh, the New England Revolution historians, and you get to sort of pass that down. And yeah, you look. How, were there a lot of people at the game? No, but nah. the people that were there, you know that they're OGs, man, and they're yeah. really uh, they all they about care. the club and they care. They care so so much. So it's like it's easy to make fun of uh, you know the teams that don't have a lot of people in their stadiums. But it's like what they always say is like. Uh, like at comedy shows, right? We like when they, when it's a sparsely attended show, you don't make fun of the people that are there. You want to keep them. You want to keep them there. So it's like, 
yeah, we can mock all day the people that, that do show up or, or the, the fact that there's not a lot of people there. But Of course we could. Easy to do. Yeah. So the, the, so there's two things. It's like we can uh, – obviously, I mean, we're not above making jokes about empty stadiums. We can do no, it No, are you well, kidding me? As well. But we, you have to give <laughs> a hanging fruit's like our favorite fruit. <laughs> it's delicious fruit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to get. <laughs> but uh, we, we got to show uh, the respect uh, where it's due because they, they not only did they put on a good tailgate and a good, a, a good event, and, and yeah, there's not – Thousands and thousands of people there, but they are, uh, you know, they they are just these veterans. They they are like war vets to some they degree. They do walk around limping and shit they, beforehand. They're, like, they're limping in like tattered clothes. Yeah, I think like, somebody was like m- missing chunks of their leg. Oh, score. <laughs> Dearest Margaret, <laughs> and for a new New England Revolution fan, that even makes more sense. Yeah, it does. Right? Uh, it's it's totally fitting. But uh, shout out to them, man. It was so so fun. We had a yeah. great time. Uh, and by the way, we took a photo with some of those guys that that uh, the the Minutemen that are there. Yeah, and uh, the it's a it's a thing that puts the gunpowder in the gun. A lot of people were commenting that we caught one of the guys smoking weed. Oh sure, which would have been I I wish that was. I know. First of all, legal in in in, in uh, Massachusetts, so don't worry about it. But uh, it was not. It was one of those like little things of gunpowder to put it in the gun. So he was pretending to do that. I told him just act normal. They were all on their cell phones, but those two guys wanted to do something continental, <laughs> you know. I guess. <laughs> sure. Revolutionary. Contra, uh, yeah, I think you mean colonial. Colonial was the word I was looking for. I mean, you're thinking about that breakfast. Breakfast. Son. <laughs> it was pretty good. How much for a coffee? Four dollars, and I made it myself. <laughs> Great. Uh, but yes, uh, but we did attend the the game as well, uh, and that was super fun. The we. We, we got we got to be on the field. This is this is so this is for for people that are curious about what this all might be like, right? What is it like to attend a New England Revolution game as media, right? So there's a couple of things I noticed. Uh, we were we were the media. <laughs> <laughs> there's not too many people. Yeah. There's not too many people out there trying to cover New England Revolution. Games. And also, it's an NFL stadium, so like there's a lot of seats for media. Yes, and a lot of a lot, a lot of, of seats of, that weren't necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of making fun, let's not make fun of the, the no, because Sam's stage school was there. Yeah, then let's not make fun of the empty sort of seats in the stadium, but we can Even make fun the of the media. Empty, the media section this is i mean this is uh, all, like uh slim pickings i mean we can just make really make fun of uh uh of the fact that they were um they, they were like sort of two levels because it's an nfl stadium they're like two levels for media right uh and one level had nobody it was us it was just, it was and like, they kept bringing out like ice cream and stuff so you and i would just get up and go <laughs> oh, get yeah, it asking for us well, that's pretty cool okay, cool <laughs> but then there's like another level there's like apple cobbler or and, something and there were more i mean they were uh i want to say they were if i could have if i had to guess maybe 15 15 to 20 people yeah. um you know i don't know what outlets necessarily. but i will say we've only ever attended media for big events for for mls all-star and mls cup yeah, so, so we've never a, seen what a generic mls game regular season game um looks like timbers we were at a regular game and we were in the media section yeah that was a, but that's a very small media section yeah, so yeah, that makes sense it was jammed so uh yeah you're right and i think we did for an atlanta united game but we we stayed in the photo area yeah we were in uh yeah on the field yeah. Uh, so we were on the field. For, so this one, there was probably how many photographers? Three. Yeah. If you count us, Four. five. <laughs> so uh, the game is not being uh, highly covered because uh, well, who knows why? I don't know. A I myriad mean, of reasons. The team's not great. Yeah. Uh, they did get a win. I mean, because of us. Uh, we were there. But we did have a fun moment because when when the the guy um, from social media brought us onto the field, we had to walk through the tunnel. Yeah, that's right. He was like, hey, do you guys want to go through the we were like, tunnel? Yeah, okay. Why a, wouldn't we? A revolution staff is bringing us to a death trap? <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't know. We were like, whoa, look at this. We're like stars. And I go, wow, they have a skylight. And as I look up, I realize the one in front of us is coming out. It looked like a movie. Yeah. It's in three sections. The section furthest it's away like, from an inflatable tunnel. Yeah, it's like the one that, like, if you were a Boca Juniors fan, you'd stab through and spray uh, pepper spray. Through, <laughs> right? So, well, actually, yeah. that's a... a re- Every, everybody gets it. Yeah, yeah. Right, you guys get that reference. <laughs> but, like, there's three sections. So we're in the first section. The section furthest away from us, at the end, I see start to come down. And in my head, it was like, oh, well, they know we're in here. Yeah. So, because this guy who's official brings us through. <laughs> this is right after we shot that quick video for their social media, mm-hmm. right? We, uh, we're, oh, I'm sure they're just going to bring down that first one, and we'll come out. And then I see the second one fall. Yeah, the one that we're in. No, no, no. There was the one in front of us. Oh, okay, okay. Fall also. It was a red one, then a blue one. And I'm like, huh. 
<laughs> but we're in the next one. And then I was like, I thought to myself, I wonder if we should get out of here. And as I'm having the thought, I see Mike, the media guy, run, yell, it's coming down. <laughs> and that's when Chris and I are like, well, what the what hell? Is this I guess about? we got to run out too? <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, we caught that. You caught that on video. I did. I was making, I was like, you know, doing some social media stuff. Uh, I thought it'd be a fun video. Of us walking, influencer stuff. Wa walking through the tunnel, uh, you know, with my Starbucks cup. Okay. <laughs> Wearing Uggs. <laughs> You know, really making sure all the brands see uh -huh. that they're getting a lot of, uh, you know, engagement. Right. And I'm uh, like, wow, this Pepsi Zero is amazing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what, I've never seen and I've never seen anything that's inflatable collapse so fast. So fast. Oh, it, it just it really, really fast. Even like, that, like, weird blow up guy in front of, like, a car dealership yeah. takes a little it while takes a little time to decompress, you yeah. know? <laughs> it, it was... Uh, we saw it sort of going down, and then, for, like, yeah, that third one, then the second one, and then it was we like... We snuck out between the I two. I honestly thought, like, like anything, like, even when you let air out of, uh, like, an, like, a, like um, uh, a floaty or something like yeah, that, you know? It's, it takes some time, you yeah. know? It really, it doesn't just leave I mean, you there drowning. Yeah, I don't know. It was a, a kill switch. <laughs> <laughs> because that must have been what happened. Yeah, it just, it literally went from completely full where, where you could walk through it comfortably, to, and and I, if we would have been in that tunnel for three or four more seconds, I mean we, we're literally pulling off, like pushing the tunnel up, yeah, off of us. Also, the guys who collapsed it, no remorse whatsoever <laughs> at seeing three adult no, men run out of it. Yo, they could care less. Those are this. They were like laughing. They were like, oh man. <laughs> We didn't know anyone was in there. Does no one check? <laughs> that's no what, one walks through? That's what I love about uh, going to Boston and bringing in that area. Like, New England is so blue collar. Oh, yeah. That it's just like, the, the, whatever you think of, you know, or this like New, uh, New York kind of, that, that hipstery scene, that sensitive, soft, whatever. That barely exists. Barely there. exists. I mean, it's there, but it, like, they're like in <laughs> hiding. Because everyone's like, whatever, chief, walk it off. <laughs> <laughs> There's some tough ass dudes out there, man. Um, but the game was fun. Let's and let's uh, talk about a couple games because that game. Uh, I will start there. New England Revolution played against Minnesota United. I know some of the Minnesota United fans were not happy with our attendance because they they feel that because we were there is why the Revolution won, which is they 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 are don't have the best record in the world. Well, we might be there soon, so we'll pass that luck on to you, maybe. Exactly. Who hmm. knows? We'll see. Pay attention. <laughs> so uh, the Revolution do play uh, against Minnesota United, and they uh, lose 2-1. to 2-1. to one. Uh, we're, we're, we're here. We're, right, uh, we're on the field watching this game. We were on the field for the first, first goal, first. and the Darwin Quintero penalty happened right behind us. That's right. Um, and uh, I, look, I'll say this because we, while, while we were at the tailgate, the, and this is how you know these, uh, you know, this is how you know Revolution fans are just they're here for it. They're 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 like they they know they're like we're probably gonna lose. They right. go in thinking, believing that they will probably lose. But and they, they had the Minnesota people. They invited the Minnesota to their tailgate, so they were they, there. Yeah, everybody was there. They saw they saw how uh, pessimistic they were. Uh huh. Uh, but. Uh, and I'll give I'll give credit to Revolution. I thought this is this might be this is this is definitely the best game they played this season. Uh, they they look on the heels of some pretty strong comments from Brad Friedel. Yes, who yeah, throwing who, his players under the bus. Yeah, uh, and the and hugged the player that clearly didn't want to be hugged in that photo. Did you see it? The guy's hands are like the bye. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, goal. Brandon bye. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the uh, clearly something's up in the locker room, and we saw Friedel standing there getting frustrated every waking moment. Uh, yeah. With his with his team, but um, I, I think the person who stood out uh, the most was uh, Car. Uh, it's Carles not Gil. Heel. Heel. Carles Heel. He's he's Spanish. Yeah, he was. Uh, they played him as a defensive midfielder, but like he's kind of like the Michael Bradley uh, position. He starts the attack from back there. He is. Amazing. Yeah, he is really, really He's good. He's really, really good. But I, this is like the thing about soccer, man. You can make one change, even just an, an adjustment. You don't have to change a player. And everything else around it clicks. Yeah. Everyone seemed uh, uh, more confident, right? Yeah. Uh, and you saw that with Agudelo a little bit. Having, and by the way, Minnesota was playing well. Minnesota was playing well. They still... Like and and I guess being being on the being on the pitch is a little it feels like a little different than just watching the game on TV because you can you can sort of be like 
you know, when you're watching the game, you can be like, why why did you make that pass or whatever? You, you can sort of criticize mistakes. But when you're field level. But when you're field level, it looks even worse. Yeah, you're like, you're damn. like, yo, dude, I, I can I, clearly. <laughs> I'm right here. I can see it. I can see. I'm, I have you like literally your your angle, your perspective. What are you doing? Don't pass it to it. Yeah. <laughs> also, why such a soft pass? You see how far he is. Yeah, you sort of you sort of get a better grasp of the quality of play amongst MLS teams when yeah. you're like when you're very very close because you could you not only do you see the quality but you also see like the decision making yeah and the Cause, pace of it because you you when you're watching on the field you can kind of get um the, uh, the 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 perspective and see like the, the see flow the of the game yeah, or, yeah yeah things about or little, they're rushing or they're afraid to have the ball different you or, can kind of yeah, get a feel for it you, you do and and that's what I where I felt Minnesota kind of fell apart in that sense where they were just Little mistakes that they were just making that that almost seemed for for 2019 Minnesota United felt a little uncharacteristic. Yeah, if this was last year, we'd be like, okay. Well, they're being Minnesota. What are you gonna do? This year they're look playing the, really well. Look at the shirt they're wearing. They're yeah, wearing. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's not their fault. <laughs> so a lot of pressure on them. But no, uh, Carlos Heel was. I, I, I look. I I've never. Uh, this is the first time I got to see him in person. First time I've seen him too. For, yeah. He's absolutely spectacular. Spectacular. I, I hope it it works out well with uh, with the revolution and and hopefully uh, they can you know just I mean their their issues are mostly defensive. Uh, not not you know they gave up the penalty which is what are you gonna do like that? It was just a yeah, weird handball. It's a weird handball and it was one of those that only VAR would have ever caught anyway. Yeah, and um, but. Overall, yeah, I, I I was genuinely excited to watch. Is he him the one that made the pass to Alibaba for that score? I don't know if he made the pass, but he definitely made the pass to to Juan Agudelo, um, to that he he missed the the chance. Yeah, but, uh, I just think Juan Agudelo hasn't had that type of service since um, what's his face left uh, when. Okay. He yeah. I don't think he's been expecting. Yeah, that's it. a good point. Uh, he'll kind of has. Why a, are you so shocked? I made a good point. <laughs> I'm not shocked that you made a good point. You're like, wow, all right, Alexis. <laughs> I'm just saying that uh, ever since Lee Wynn left, and, or not even left, I mean, he stopped, He wasn't even playing yeah. while, he, while he was with the team. Since he mentally left the team. <laughs> so he, he checked out, but that um, that's a good point because Lee Wynn was such a such a creator. Uh, yes, and and he was the one who made the pass to Anibaba. So, yeah, look, yeah. He, he's making... They, they, that's, exactly, that's what they were missing. So, uh, but the game was fun. I, I, I had a good time. Congrats, Revolution! I'm glad. You know, I, every time we go to uh, go to a game, it's it's nice when the home team wins. It feels a little better. Well, like you know, we're not necessarily supporting either team or whatever, but we it feels a little bit better when the home team wins. Cause Especially because we're hanging out with those fans. Exactly. By the way, people were leaving the stadium like a funeral happened anyway, and they had won. <laughs> they Wasn't did. it so sad? It was sad. That, look, and um, New England Revolution fans have a uh, reason to be sad right their team has been uh not great and and it's and it permeates everywhere i'm saying in the media box amongst amongst the players the staff everybody everybody the building has that emotion it's insane and 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 like it was good to talk to people because they you know they, they have that the hope that maybe the team will move into boston and and maybe just revitalize them because they, they're still doing it's still mls 1.0 yeah with with the revolution and they and they've lost the 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 excitement that that uh, of a new team and or a team that does very well yeah uh, and they're playing a big ass stadium and a lot of, not a lot of people going so uh, it doesn't feel fresh it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel fun you know even even teams that have been around for a long time have uh, you know sort of have a new spirit like Red Bull we've talked about how they kind of have a new feeling to them in the last few years right mm -hmm. they're not like stale like they used to be there's there's something fun and exciting about the brand itself sure. even they haven't changed much they've adapted they've they've sort of created a culture where it's a bit more fun for their fans New England Revolution is not there yet. No. They're still no. kind of in that MLS 1.0. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. I mean, everybody needs a new stadium. So speaking of another team that needs a stadium, New York City Football Club. Here we go. Uh, let's go. So they played uh, at BMO uh, no, Field. Didn't they, didn't they cancel this game? They postponed <laughs> it, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, sure. They, I mean, it was... Uh, the, the One team thought so. <laughs> the game itself felt like a death in the family. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? Jesus But Christ. this is that. 4-0 to Toronto. Toronto, a team who has not had a good start. Uh, you would you would have thought NYCFC would have kind of picked up... Uh, Pozuelo came in and he was like, yo, I got this. Alejandro Pozuelo. I, I, arguably uh, I mean, one of the probably one of the greatest MLS debuts ever. I, top three, I would say. I would I would say Slotons is probably a little better because of the insanity of that game. Sure, 
and to win, and it was a it was a derby. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. That, obviously, that, that that would probably take but, that. But this was Pozuelo put it on him. Put it on him with with a little bit more. You know, uh, Zlatan is is you know he he forces it in there. Yeah. Well, Pos- Zlatan's more like me. Pozuelo's more like you. <laughs> Pozuelo is like gentle. He charms you first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pozuelo's <laughs> like, I'm not sure I can do this. Oh no! Turns out I'm amazed. <laughs> <laughs> oh look at that, huh? <laughs> Such a humble he's man. Like, he's like a he's like a pool hustler. <laughs> Basically. He's like, no, I cannot play. Okay, double or nothing. And let's see. Oh, I can do this with my eyes closed. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. Oh, I own your family now. <laughs> oh wow. Where is this house of mine I now own? Wow. Which car? Tell me. I don't want to hit the button and ruin my pool playing thumb. Oh, uh, uh, look. Uh, and and this was really the highlight of the game because Pozuelo was un. Believable and He's also unstoppable. <laughs> apparently, uh, I clearly uh, Dome did not do any, uh, you know, research on no. this guy. They were like, uh, you know, we'll be fine. Uh, he's They're new. Like, Dome, you want to watch the tape? Nah, he's nah, out. He's got he needs to learn about us. <laughs> Uh, Pozuelo, he um, uh, came from Genk. Genk came from Ghent in Belgium. Genk. Genk. Yeah, yeah and the Ghent is a different team. Ghent is a different team. Genk. Wait, maybe he did come from Ghent. Uh, I don't know where he came from. You're the one who said it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'll look at his... He came from Dang. He came from <laughs> Genk. I was right. Yes, you were right. Oh, so why, that's why... why was I surprised? <laughs> yes, he... Uh, which is in Belgium, right? Am I crazy? Uh, yes. Belgium League, yes. So, um, he... Uh, so, uh, nobody really knew exactly what to expect. Uh, they... I mean, he was, like, the one of the most creative players in that league. So, I think they knew he was of quality. Yeah. But how does someone take? You know, yeah, it takes a while to learn MLS, right? But interesting because he, he some look, people takes half a season for him, twenty minutes. Four years in uh, it, playing at Genk, uh, uh, one hundred and six appearances, only seventeen goals. Well, he's already on his way. There. He's already. <laughs> yeah, he's I mean, a, really, a third of the way <laughs> to, to score two uh, right first MLS game uh, against a team that's not like weak defensively per se. Uh, but well, they were on that day. They were they were bad, and actually, Maxi Morales didn't play that game, which had a, definitely a huge effect on the and possession. And also, NYCFC has have been the uh, the new striker. That's right. He's but he hasn't started yet. He hasn't started yet. So there, there's some clearly some changes coming. I know the fans want to see Dome gone for the most part, right? I think that's like the the groundswell. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that. Yeah. There's. Uh, I mean, it's frustrating, right, for NYCFC fans. Uh, four games, no wins, just uh, three draws and, and and one loss. This is. Uh, it's just a worse start than the first year, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is not great. So it's not good. Let's so let's just talk about the the. the but did you hear the rumor? The did I hear the rumor? No, I didn't. Pep Guardiola. Somebody says that they have it on on good sources that when Pep Guardiola signed the deal with Manchester City, when he's done with Manchester City, he's supposed to go to man to New York City Football Club to be the manager. Okay. That that's. In his contract. That, it's an option. I don't know if he's going, like... He has that he's gone fo- to his he's head. He's forced to go. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not necessarily his next step. But it's an option for him. Okay. Uh, what you thinking? Uh, that would be amazing. It's interesting, because I've been, I've been seeing people react to this differently. Like, you know, Pep playing in MLS, uh, you know, coaching in MLS for two y- a year or two years would not be good for the league, but... How, I mean, it couldn't be any more wrong, right? I mean, I, and when Patrick Vieira came, uh, it, it attracted a little bit more interest into the league. Without a doubt, it it does it validates you a little bit, yeah. you know. It helps. And, and, and of all people, Pep. I mean, I mean, Mourinho. People would be like, I get Mourinho going to MLS because he's a clown. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah, defensive, <laughs> and they can't play attack anyway. So it would be, it would be more reasons to mock, but Pep, who has. All the coaching pedigree and and has all the respect in the world. He is he is ar- arguably the greatest manager in the last. I mean, I don't know, ten years. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. How Certainly, to... the winningest. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, which I believe is just called most successful. But... <laughs> well, but people uh, would would I think the the world soccer would be angry. They would have to. They would angrily respect his choice you know what i mean also i mean they'd be like well he won everything else why wouldn't he go and he would be the coaching version of when uh, david beckham chose to go to mls i mean which was silly because no, it is it would be it would be the most massive validation of this league and of soccer on this side of the world across the board and i mean him trying to win Concacaf champions league oh my god would be, the- be amazing <laughs> just pep in mexico uh, Mexico, those are the good games. <laughs> Pep in San Salvador. Yeah, dude. That'd Playing be... Alianza. <laughs> That'd be fun. And he'd be like, this 
This is clearly the field we parked the cars in, right? <laughs> and you painted it to look like a soccer field. We were playing on this. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, it, it was. Um, so, so that news is whatever. Oh, who? It, it, it'll be exciting. Obviously, not gonna uh, hold my breath for that. But let's talk about the two Pozuelo goals. The 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 Panenka. You ordered two bags of chips. <laughs> <laughs> the Panenka on on Sean Johnson for the uh, the penalty. Wild disrespectful. I mean, I want to go to wild. This both of them were wild. This but the first Penenka is the most disrespectful penalty. Yes, it is. I think it, it, the the balls on Pozuelo. If it goes bad, it this looks is his terrible. first goal in Major League Soccer. Yeah, his first ever penalty. He first of all, he also gets to take the penalty. This is his first day in school. Yeah, I, he's yeah. like, hey, you're all right. You're the principal now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I pick my own lunch table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they gave him a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Clearly, they had some trust in him. And does a Penenka the pe- first? I mean, if you miss the Penenka on your first ever penalty in Major League Soccer, you get roasted. And you're a DP. You just signed like four or five million dollar deal. They paid like a nine million dollar transfer fee. Yeah, things are not going to be good at halftime for you. Yeah. Uh, but he scores that and incredible. But then. Really, he, he really did two Penencas t- to some degree. No, he did. Yeah. <laughs> I thought both were wild disrespectful. Yeah, the second one was... He also chipped from, like, outside the 18. Yeah, no, I wasn't I wasn't outside the 18. But it, yeah, was, it was it was right inside. It was right inside. It was still... It was probably, like, 16 yards out. He scooped the ball. Are you sure? I think he did it from outside. He didn't do it from outside, because I saw it. Uh, <laughs> and I saw it, too. <laughs> it, it was inside. So... Um, the, uh, I can look at the, where the score, the goals came from. Anyway, the, um, the second one after, after he, uh, scored the goal, there was like the, I, what surprised me the most was that he didn't, um, celebrate. Right. So this is he just walked away like another day at the office. <laughs> I almost would have wanted him to really go I crazy think it's because it took a deflection. I don't know. It didn't take a deflection. Hey, I feel like it did. <laughs> You're right, by the way. It was inside the 18. I know. But I honestly feel like it came a little bit off his leg, and I think that's why he didn't celebrate. Uh, I think he knows he got a little lucky there. It, no, it didn't hit anybody. It, it was, did. It the was the defender split. put his leg. I can't remember. I think it was Rain. As, uh, Collins and Ben, ben Sweat was playing like the, 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 I think the right post. And and Collins uh, was playing the left post, and it didn't. It didn't. It was just amazing. It was an amazing, amazing goal. Uh, Sean Johnson. No one would expect that. And the fact that he he did this so courageously in his first ever game, the dude had no nerves whatsoever. It's just like crazy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like this is like when um, remember when Didier Drogba uh, got a hat trick in his first game? People were like, "All right, what does that say about the league?" Okay. What does this say about? Yeah, the yeah, league? yeah. Yeah, where it's like a it's a, a concern. Uh, well, it's like oh, that the league is so easy that someone could come in day one, just pop off. No, <laughs> not two but, chips. No, he two he's, bags of Doritos. He's he's that, which is what we're calling it from now on. <laughs> he's that good. He's that good. Uh, and y- yeah, you got you got to give him the credit because uh, NYCFC. Yeah, they were maybe had a rough time, but they really couldn't figure him out at all. So uh, yeah. I, uh, what what does this mean for NYCFC going forward? What what, what do they do? Is is Ebert gonna fix everything? You hope so. I mean, clearly Dome is gonna have a little bit more time because he has to integrate Ebert, and and they have to see how that goes. Yeah, but he ain't got the longest amount of rope. Yes, at uh, least that's not how it feels. No, not at all. Yeah, people are mad. People are getting upset. And now there, there was a um, a stat that came out that uh, Dome's record. He's only won four games in the last twenty or something like that, or nineteen or twenty games. Uh, so not not great. Uh, no, that's I, not a good thing. It's, it's it it feels worse when you hear it uh, in in a twenty game span. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you only won four of those. Wow. That's not, that's not enough of those. That feels like it feels like a number that should be higher. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else agree with me? And it, it's kind of strange, but yeah, the the last uh, couple matches. So he got twelve points out of a possible sixty. No, no, he, he, there were a couple of draws, but only four wins. Oh, okay. Uh, we, not great. That's not good. Not great. And and you sort of, I think we uh, have that recency bias when we think, oh, NYCFC was in the playoffs. They won. You know, they beat uh, Philadelphia yeah. Union and all this. Stuff. But it's like, nah, man, they were they were recency pretty bad. Biased? Re- recency bias. Recency bias. Is what that's called. Oh, wow. Okay. Smart, huh? <laughs> that's why you partner up with smart people. It's all my dummies out there. <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, let's talk about two more games, and then we'll uh, bring... We also got to talk about the event I hosted without having to host it. 
Uh, okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you want to talk about that now? Yeah, the ICC. That's right. So there was uh, part of the ICC was uh, Street Soccer FC or Streets FC. Street, Tom Martino. Street FC, not Streets, street, plural. Street FC. Tom Martino, right? We know him. We love him. Been yeah. on the show before. Beautiful beard, right? Uh, great body. I don't know what else you want to hear about him, right? Tom Martino's it's amazing. It's the die for it. Right? <laughs> Bounce a quarter of it. It'll smack you in the face and chip a tooth, okay? Uh, don't try it. So he's going to love hearing this. So he's hosting an event. So we get reached out to by the folks who run ICC. We get yeah. invited to a couple events, right? Yes. Thank you to Soccer Girl Probs for making sure that we knew about it, right? Uh, yeah. And so we get invited. We don't get paid to be there, but we get invited. It's mm-hmm. kind of cool, right? Yeah. I eat up a bunch of. It's where I scared uh, Robert P. Rez and uh, yes, Diego yeah, Forlan. If you've been following, if you don't follow us on Instagram, you're making you're a huge out. mistake. But there's a there's a lot of fun stuff going on. Yeah. I completely scared you both meet, of those. Yeah, you meet Robert Perez and you act like a complete Newark <laughs> maniac. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm, I am who I am. And was drinking that day. <laughs> I am what I am. Yeah, I is what I is. <laughs> so I met Diego Forlan. I mean, Uruguayan hero. Yes. Right? And I tell him, like, oh, my God, is it cool if we do a video? And he's like, yeah, of course. As soon as I put the video on, he sees who I really am. <laughs> He was like, one well, nothing to do. As soon as I turned the camera off, he kept his hands in his pockets. He turned his back to me <laughs> to speak to nobody. There was nobody sure, behind yeah, him. Yeah. He he's just like, turned. I just really need to get away from this man. He's like, I think I can pretend I'm a tree. <laughs> and there's, oh, we'll leave. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I guess I got to walk away. Diego Forlan just iced me, yeah. right? So uh, the next day, they're hosting this event. Camartino is doing an event with the 99 Women's uh, World Cup winning team and the 94 World Cup qualifying uh, men's team. Yes. Amazing, right? Yeah. So we're hanging out. All the media has to go to one section. We're not being allowed up, right? I get there. The elevator's on one side. It's above the new design school, um, which the Cedar Cedar Park something or other school used to be called, right? We get there. The uh, security guys, you got to talk to the security guy. Other uh, security guys, you got to go back to that guy. Me and Soccer Girl Probs are trying to get up there. There's a couple other people just kicking with us. All these guys are um, just showing up, all these media people. Yeah. And they're not letting anybody in, right? So I say to the one guy who's like, Clearly works for ICC, not a security guard. I was like, hey, I got to get upstairs. I'm, I'm late already as it is. I got to get up there. And he was like, who are you here with? And I look over and I see Susan Sarandon. Sure. The homie. Susan Sarandon. You know we homies. I? <laughs> ah. Ah, ah. What up, Sue? <laughs> well, you know what I said? I'll go, hey, Suze. And I tapped her on the elbow. Right? What's up, Suze? Right? Did the old, like, hey, of course we're friends. Yeah. And then I looked back at the security guard. I was like, come on, can I go up or not? And he was like, very confused, assumed I knew Susan Sarandon, <laughs> and was like, uh, yeah, I guess. It was the other security guy behind him was like, no, we can't let this guy up here just because he knows Susan Sarandon. He's not on the list. He can't get up. We got to find this other list. Susan Sarandon goes, just let him up with me. Suze, <laughs> the Su- homie. Susan Sarandon. Right, get on the show, Susan. <laughs> so I go, come on, right? And the security guard's like, no, we can't. Boom. I turn around, side girl problems are like, yo, you know Susan Sarandon? <laughs> I go, hell no. I go, I can't believe I touched her and called her Suze, right? I touched her on the elbow. I hope she's cool with it, right? Though we, we go upstairs, all the media is on one side of the field, and the other side of the field is the VIPs, right? Okay. And guess who one of those is? It's Judah Friedlander. Really, honestly, the really a homie, right? Comedian Judah, Judah Friedlander, who we, we know, we know very well. Times. Yeah. We know him very well. Good friend. Could have texted him. I decide I'm walking across the field. <laughs> they say, don't walk on the field. I say, I make my own rules, okay? <laughs> I'm homies with Suze, okay? <laughs> so I walk over. I'm talking to Judah a little bit. All of a sudden, Cal Martino comes out with a microphone. Yeah. All right, everybody, take your seats. Take your places, blah, blah, blah. Now I really can't get across the field because he's there with the camera. So Judah and I just start walking towards where Judah's going, which is, it's me, Judah, Bobby Cannavale, mm. Susan Sarandon, Rose Byrne, Jason Sudeikis. So like a real murderer's row. And me, <laughs> the third string catcher, right? <laughs> just not really supposed to be there at all. But I'm now taking videos of Ethan White. This guy played professionally. He's on the other side, staying there cold. He can't, he, you can't problems. get past this velvet rope, Nah, dog. son. Soccer girl problems. Aaron West. Everyone on the other side. Not me. I'm with the VIP. <laughs> okay? So I'm taking videos. I'm taking pictures. I want to get memories of all this. All of a sudden... Con Martino hands a microphone to Aaron West. He does a little uh, hosting. Hands it to uh, Melissa Ortiz. She does a little hosting. Grabs a mic from her. Hands it to Judah. Judah don't really want to do it. Low key. He's telling me, I really don't want to do this. I was like, well, say this. Boom. He says it. Gets a laugh. I go, say this. Boom. Says it. Gets a laugh. I said, say this. Boom. Gets, says he. Gets a laugh. And he goes, here, why don't you just do it? Yeah. 
I grabbed that mic, bruh. That's it. I don't let it go. It didn't, <laughs> you didn't pass the baton anymore. Nah, son. <laughs> Who am I going to give it to? Somebody worse than me at this? <laughs> I take over. And by the way, like I said, not getting paid. So what do I do? I say Cooligans 75 times. <laughs> Psycho Problems, if you're listening right now, Aaron West, if you're listening right now, Ethan White, if you're listening right now, they all know I ain't bullshit. <laughs> no cap. I literally kept saying, guys, don't forget this, this whole event is sponsored by Cooligans. <laughs> The funniest soccer podcast in the world. Download Cooligans, C O O L I G A N S. Yeah. Cooligans. It's myself and Christian Blair. I literally kept throwing out commercials for Cooligans the whole time. I'm making, I'm riffing, I'm making jokes. I'm telling people if they nutmeg chill, because at one point the players' kids come into play. I was like, remember, folks, if you nutmeg a child, I'll give you $5. Also, can anyone let me borrow $5? Right? Good line. Right? Not bad, right? <laughs> I'm a hip, but dude, it's hitting, right? Because yeah. they don't know humor, right? It's hitting. <laughs> it's hitting big. And all of a sudden, Susan's Saran and I look over she's looking at me she's laughing she's having a good time yeah the guys who run ICC come over and they go hey this wasn't an event until you grabbed the mic I go really <laughs> the 94 World Cup qualifying team and the 99 winning World Cup qualifying yeah, dude. winning team I mean, host, it and I'm me it goes a long way having I'm the good, one having a good host so at the end Bobby Collin and I talked about being from Jersey and Cuban right the whole nine Susan Saran and Bobby, they're all, and Jason. Jason did that quick video for yeah, us. Yeah, you saw that video from Jason Zdeka. That was awesome. He's gully, apparently, yeah, right? Well, Big fan. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Susan's like, hey, you were really funny. You were hilarious. Pats me on the chest. Mm. I was like, hi, Suze. I'm okay. married, okay? <laughs> Calma, te coño. Well, I think right? she was returning the favor from you touching you her elbow. elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. She goes, a little closer, <laughs> right? Uh, so she goes, where are you performing next? And then Bobby comes in and goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go see you. Bobby Cannavale. Okay. Boardwalk Empire. Boardwalk Empire. Great show. Bobby Cannavale goes, of course, we'll come see you. When are you up at the cellar? Oh, oh boy. Can't. Pull the rug right out from underneath <laughs> old Alexis. Bobby, Susan, putting a good word yeah, with no. Uh, <laughs> Call <no>. Esty. <laughs> Text her. Let him know. I need two vouchers. You could think of better vouchers <laughs> than Susan Sarandon and Bobby kind of out. That's right. One voucher from <laughs> Susan Sarandon should be enough. That's two right there. Her in the elbow I touch. <laughs> so I said to Bobby, I go, how long are you in town for? And he goes, probably three more weeks. I go, all right, well, I had like nine and a half years to that. And then maybe I'll be up at the cellar. We all giggle and they all go off to eat. Missy, I tell them what not to get at Missy, what to eat, blah, blah, blah. And they were like surprised that I knew all that. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm a food expert. It's me. He starts asking me about Cuban food. It was great. As we're leaving, guy from ICC thanked me. I told you what he said before, blah, blah, blah. The yeah. whole nine he said, hey, we'd love to have you back next time. Ooh. And I wanted to be like, oh, let me see the list of VIPs. <laughs> before I, I <laughs> make any commitments. I mean, I need, to, I need to chill with somebody a little better than Sue's next time. <laughs> She's great, but we got to we gotta step our game up. Exactly. Uh, well, cool. Yeah, that was. Uh, I didn't go to the event. You did. Uh, I got us covered, though. You I represented. Said you represented. So that was, uh, that was dope. All right. So, Heavy. Uh, all right. Two more games. Then we'll bring our guest, Travis Irvine, uh, on in so the next funny. segment. So great, great. So funny. So Columbus. Oh, so Columbus. That's right. I feel like that should be a shirt. So yeah. funny. So Columbus. Uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's talk about Sporting Kansas City and the Montreal Impact, right? And cause Touchdown. Because there were a couple, there were a couple uh, just beatdowns uh, this weekend. Dude, the, game, the scores have been wild this year. Yeah, it feels like uh, the... That parody, not so existent. I mean, it, it just, a lot of four nils, five ones, five twos, seven one now. Yeah, it's just like the the inconsistency from week to week is a little odd. That's a, that's the thing. It's that compact schedule this year, man. Maybe so many people jammed in. Whoever gets a little bit more rest, I think, has a real big advantage. Maybe that's something for the old fantasy fans. Good huh? point. Good point. So, uh, Sporting Kansas City wins this game seven to one. Uh, and really, the, really, what stands out more is the, the the Montreal goal. That you're like, you're more concerned about that one. Like, what really? What what was up with uh, Sinovich and uh, Damn, how'd you let that go? <laughs> and Beasler, like, was that our fault? Yeah. You know that one goal. Um, but. A uh, hat trick from Christian uh, Nemeth, uh, a, a brace from Johnny Russell, a goal from uh, Gianluca Buzio. Uh, a poacher's goal. Well, not really. Not a poacher's goal. He no, stole no, no. it. He stole, he, he, he stole it off the foot of a defender who's doing too much. Exactly. You're doing too much, You're bro. Doing too much. <laughs> and uh, Gian, little baby Gianluca Buzio. Yeah. Uh, little baby Buzio. Yeah, little baby Buzio. <laughs> little, little Buzio. <laughs> little Buzio. We know he's not, he's not there. He doesn't want any tricks or any fun little games, all right? No. He's there. He's he, he has a he has a very serious coach that that is trusting a 16 year old, I think 16 or 17 years old, to uh, with a gorgeous head of hair, uh, to put him on the pitch. So he he's like he, he watch he sees that he sees a a center back dribbling across the top of his own box. He literally looked like a kid who's good at soccer and his uncle who's fucking around a little bit, <laughs> and the kid just stole it right from his foot. 
<laughs> and then he finesses it into the goal. Yeah. He kind of curls it around from close range, curls it around the keeper. Yeah. Jello Cabusio. Evan Bush. Wow. Evan Bush had just a terrible day. Evan Bush just sounds like an old, like, uh, like alternative rock band. Doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> opening for Limp Bizkit, Evan Bush. <laughs> well, Bush was a very popular alternative. Rock I remember band. those patches. Sure, people would wear them on backpacks and stuff. That's how you got into white girls. <laughs> anyway, what? <laughs> That's how I got into white girls. Because of the band Bush. Because of those patches. I thought it was. I thought it meant something else. I didn't know. It was band. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, it's not just white girls that have bushes. No, but the the patches. Yes, yeah, overwhelmingly. <laughs> if you have a patch that says Bush, you probably have a bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> and whatever, you're young, you just want to see something, you know. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> little insight to the old Guerrero's mind. Great, great on Sporting Kansas City because they have a, they have a game this week against Monterrey, so this obviously do a lot for their their self esteem. Same goal line, same goal score. I, I mean, score line. <laughs> hopefully not reversed. No, uh, no. I think I think Sporting Kansas City in the form that they're in. Uh, uh, and, and we have heard the uh, Peter Vermees. Uh, I, I was reading that he, he, I think he negotiated with the players' union to break all, basically break the rules of when the players could start training. Break the contracts. Not yeah, contract. gonna, no one's on TAM anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he t- the agreement of like you know of the that the, the collective bar- bargaining agreement of like when they're supposed to train and when the season's supposed to start and all that stuff. He he basically contacted them so they could he could be like we need to start training earlier so that they could be ready for these Champions League games. And you sort of see it right. They Sporting Kansas City seems like they, Mid- mid-season form. Yeah, it, it it sounds like if it, they look like they started when Liga MX started. Yeah, uh, and they're and they're playing the other MLS teams can't really keep up. No. So, but I wonder if they're going to burn out a little quicker because of it. So we'll see once the playoffs come. We will see. But yeah, they might burn out when they're lifting the Champions League trophy. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the case. <laughs> so uh, just an absolute, just uh, yeah, uh, drubbing. Peter uh, Vermees got to be now that Greg Berhalter is out, right? Mm-hmm. I think Peter Vermees is the best American coach. American coach. Yeah, let's see that. I'll become the so winner. consistent. He was up. He was up, sort of up for the job and. With whatever U.S. soccer is Well, I mean, doing. Greg Vanny is one, right? Greg Vanny's team is playing better, but they had a really rough last year. Peter Vermees has been so goddamn I would, consistent. I would trust Peter Vermees over almost any other coach like that I can think of right now. Really? In, in uh, America. Bob Bradley? Yes, I would. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, tell Bob. I, I mean, Bob had a shot. Bob was good. I he did. <laughs> Bob, Bob, you've been there before, buddy. Bob, yeah. <laughs> Let somebody else get that shot, my guy. <laughs> um, last game we wanted to talk about was uh, Sport, uh, San Jose against LAFC. The earthquakes, uh, the those those sponsorless earthquakes, and they're showing it. I think there's something when you don't have a sponsor. Did you say spineless? <laughs> <laughs> when you don't have a sponsor on your shirt, I don't know. You can't play to a certain level. It's difficult to wake up and put the shirt on. It feels a little right? different. You got to have one of those pyramid schemes on the front at least. You don't got a pyramid scheme on your shirt, bro? Dog, I mean, you, are you even in MLS? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, Which a USL looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, LAFC. Somebody tweeted, "I can't wait to see how San Jose gets roasted on the podcast yes, this yes. week." You could just retweet that every week. <laughs> nah, this man, man Markin is not looking good though. LAFC was just straight up like, "I got five on <laughs> it because <laughs> that your pole as can keep." <laughs> they absolutely demise. It's just like just like similar to Montreal and how and just defensively when like I don't know what happens after like one or two goals, the the you, you they just don't have any heart left, man. Nah. And and uh but this is this was clearly the case after the the the, the seven fir- one was mostly second half too. Like it was two nil in the first half. This was a throughout the game were, yeah. drubbing. <laughs> but the first goal, I think it, this, something happens when you give up a goal like the, that, that first goal where the keeper missed the clearance and Vela was there just, just to walk it in. I uh, mean, disrespectfully walk it in too. He did. He he, he held it on for a Show while. A little bit. The, uh, the defender tried to take his legs out too. That's right. Well, you can't blame him. No, that's what you do. <laughs> don't you so, dare showboat on me. The keeper was uh, Daniel Vega, uh, who I, I don't who know. Who recorded Mambo number five. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. It's it's, it's good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. He's multi-talented. Uh, oh, <laughs> Mambo goals number five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just goals number five. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so we had Vela and Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> Golasso number five. Uh, so the um, the obviously what I th- what sort of stands out the Vela's hat trick and Vela's just looking absolutely incredible in this game. And even when you saw yeah, after the third.
third goal, the energy that Bob Bradley showed when he when he celebrated the goal, you 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 sort of feel like he because he you know he he had already experienced the. Uh, losing to LA Galaxy, right? And they were yeah. up three, and they ended up uh, up two or whatever. And he ne ne about Nothing, never getting no, too comfortable. Yeah. You always every, no lead is safe. Every <laughs> the, the, the ninety the ninth 90, goal, he's yeah. taking his shirt off. He's like, yes, it's, <laughs> a, it's the 90th minute. We're up by ten. Go get him! <laughs> <laughs> what if they bring on Slatan? He's got PTSD. Left on Slatan. Matias Amir is up to his tricks again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the the br the, the hat trick from Vela was. Unreal, uh, but the Vela looked so comfortable out there. Just having a good old time. He was swallowing out there. <laughs> That's just a new verb. <laughs> uh, uh, the third goal that, to complete the hat trick was phenomenal, and and like, it's his goal. That's his move. It's he is he is our Aryan Robin. Yeah, he is. That's the and he's, but he doesn't do it at the same pace as it, I. I would say I would argue it's almost harder for Vela to do what he does over Arjen Robin because Arjen Robin goes from the right, cuts into the left with some pretty good speed, and kind of he he cracks the ball with so much pace that most keep, keepers can't reach it. They can't right. get to it. Vela is almost like like inherent. He's so aware of where the keeper is standing and where and most. That, that that was that shot was definitively I don't know maybe four or five yards out of, outside the box. That's I mean that's like a 22, 23 yard. Think about how much time the keeper has to watch it. Exactly. And you still can't stop and it. He, and he's not he's not running at you. He's not doing. He's I think just, he took a step back. <laughs> I think it was a fadeaway curler. I yeah, think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, James Harden with the rock. <laughs> I mean, it's just so hard to watch. And you know, you know, it felt like it was in the air for 30 seconds. <laughs> and if you're a San Jose fan, you're like, no, yeah. come on, stop. Why? <laughs> oh, really? Come on. And then it scores. Yeah, it, it's really incredible. There, there, I, I, there's not many players, uh, you know, and Bob Bradley, I, I had, I finished watching We Are LAFC, you know, and he was talking about, you know, the, 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 that thing sort of went viral about him, uh, Bob Bradley talking to Carlos Vela and telling him, like, you know, why can't you be the next Messi? And, you know, and maybe that sounds crazy and all this other stuff. But why can't Carlos Vela be the next Messi of MLS? Like, he plays... There's zero... First of all, the only one stopping him is him, clearly. Yeah, because because so, the keepers ain't doing it. Yeah, he's, he's too focused. If he stopped focusing on basketball, he would be the next Messi. Bro, you'd be bigger than the NBA <laughs> if you could fucking do this. Yeah, because he he plays, I would I, I would argue, with the, with the same uh, or a similar grace that Leo Messi does. He, he, the, his, Especially against competition like MLS. Yes. So he has the ability to undoubtedly be the best player in this league. He also, I think, has the ability to bring non-soccer fans into this league sure. because of how good he plays. He's a good-looking dude. He's young. He seems like a superstar. He has that superstar appeal to him. He could change everything sure. in a way where Slotson has to be heavy-handed with it. Him just smiling in the background does it. Exactly. Yeah. Yo, Va, Carlito. You might cute. Be cute. I know, dog. Be cute, dog. <laughs> Just keep being cute. Scoring yeah. goals. Yeah, dude. <laughs> With your baby face. <laughs> How about the announcers calling him Carlitos, Carlitos, Carlitos? Yeah. What's with the S at the end? That's what they call him. It's Carlito. <laughs> you say you say like you're from the Bronx. It's Carlito's way. It's, it's Carlito. Carlito. Oh, you can say Carlito if you want, but there's no S at the end. It's plural. He's he's so many Car Carloses. <laughs> he's uh, he's so many small <laughs> Carloses. Uh, but yeah, he, he's he's been incredible. And yeah, I I mentioned this like two three weeks ago, but like he seems like he's gonna be the MVP. I don't know uh, if this was a. It might have been an April Fool's thing, but I saw that. Um, Gio De Santos is is training with them. Was that was that an April Fool's thing? Must must have been, yeah. That's not real. Because, but the contract was bought out, so he's not playing right. No, now. he's not playing. Yeah, can he train with them still? Uh, he might be able to. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea of that. But I mean, I feel like even that would up upset LA Galaxy fans. Well, I mean, of course, everything <laughs> upsets LA Galaxy fans. We love you, LA Galaxy uh, fans. Um, so, uh, well, so we'll talk about uh, Columbus and Atlanta with uh, with Travis, so we can uh, you know get some uh, you know get some insight insight on what's going on. Some insider trade. I mean, insight <laughs> <laughs> with those uh, with those crew. Uh, so we'll be right back after this. Hey everybody! Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We just want to break in from one of our uh, from a word from one of our, in three, two. <laughs> hey everybody! Thank you. So
you so much for listening to the podcast. We just want to bring in one of our, from one of our sponsors, us and you. Yes, you. Thank you so much for we have we've had so many Gully Squad members be so uh, just awesome the last couple of weeks. Dopest. So funny. The, the 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 super secret face Facebook group that may or may not exist. We don't know if it exists. Has or not. been incredibly fun. Uh, yeah. what, who knows if it's fun or not? I mean, who uh, knows? Maybe <laughs> allegedly it's been allegedly fun. Allegedly, it's been very, very fun. It's been a blast. Uh, um, really cool. So uh and and uh, a lot of people received those uh those welcome gully squad packs that we that's right, gully AF. Now you're gully AF as well. Uh, so thank you for thank you honestly this is just a, a thank you for supporting the show uh it means the world and we're able to uh, do a lot more stuff so uh we we are planning to give you guys more exclusive content because i feel like the gully squad members absolutely deserve it yeah they absolutely do you know, so initially, we, we already got some good ideas yeah initially the, it was like hey you guys will be supporting the show helping us make a, se- a second episode you know the gully squad members were there to support us and basically subsidize uh for the people who you know maybe couldn't afford it or didn't want to pay or which whatever which is fine which is totally fine we love you too yeah, we love you even if you ain't got it. It's cool just for supporting us. Exactly. But now the Gully Squad members are, are coming out in such full force that we have to give them some love. And we, we got to have to give them, yeah. them exclusive content. So we have uh, a couple things coming up. And one of them, uh, we, we just did uh, a live show uh, called Sunday Afternoon Live with uh, John Hudson uh, and uh, 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 Neil Sharma. Okay, Neil yeah. Sharma. They, they do Over this, at Caveat. In yeah, New York, they do yeah. the show in New York. Uh, it's a soccer comedy show. Super, super fun. Super creative. Yeah, so They have awesome. their own ultra which are super funny. Yeah, it, it's a great show. And go see this show if you're ever in New York. They do the show monthly. But we were on it. We filmed it. It was super fun. We did a Jermaine Jones PowerPoint presentation about his life. We explained how we're involved in his story. <laughs> and it was super, super fun. And we're going to be uh, giving that to our Gully Squad members. So if you want to be a part of that and you want to see that, uh, you got to join. Go to SoccerCooligans.com slash Gully Squad. And you can pick. You can join at any level, whatever you're sort of comfortable uh, giving and supporting with. Uh, so Go to do that right now. Go to soccercooligans.com slash gully squad. And if you join before uh this uh, before the end of the month, if you, uh, we'll send out another uh you know welcome welcome pack for you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh soccercooligans.com slash gully squad, join now. Yeah, baby, we're back. Yo, okay, this is uh dope. I'm I'm, I'm happy to have another friend gets I, to come on the pod. I'm 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 happy to have him back because yes. he, he, last time he was uh on the show, he called in uh from Columbus, Ohio. Right, but now he's right in our face. He was uh, he was in uh, what Defcon, Centcom. You were in Central Command. I was in Centcom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In Centcom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They uh, let me in. Somehow. The voice you're hearing is you've heard him on the podcast before. Comedian, friend of ours, massive Columbus Crew fan. Somehow all mixed together, our worlds have collided. That's yeah. right. And we get to have him on this show. We absolutely love him when he's around. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving, put your hands together for the one, the only Travis Irvine. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, Travis. Yeah. Uh, hello. He was waiting for the applause. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yes. I love that you are here because now uh, people who are watching on YouTube can actually see you, right? And see how much of a how car- scary you look now. How, I, how I much, look so scary. How yeah. much of a cartoon character <laughs> you look you. like? Your hair is all over the place. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not saying anything you don't already know. Yeah. You're, I want to give you a compliment. I don't think I've ever told you this before. I remember the first time I ever saw you perform. I was just like, I if that's comedy, I'll never be able to do that. Because <laughs> oh, no. you, you take it from a place where it's like, it all makes sense in the end, <laughs> but you're not. It's like catching usual suspects halfway through. You know, like oh, you're right, like, wait, right. why is everyone upset about this <laughs> one? Thing? And then at the end, you're like, oh, uh, it's like he was crazy or so sad. <laughs> yeah, but like you're, yeah. dude, you're you're so like irreverent in the funniest way possible that it's like hard for me. I know I can't put my arms around how you think of those things. Oh, you know, so thank like. You. The fact that you're a soccer fan, I'm like, man, we have something in common with this <laughs> yeah. guy. That's why it's so exciting the way you guys have blown up with this. I mean, the Cooligans. It's like, cause Thank like you. Christian and I, I mean, we know each other from the open mics way back in the day. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just nice when the, the worlds collide. It was like, oh, you're a soccer fan? I'm a soccer yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, yeah. you used to come to my open mic at Freddy's Bar in Park Slope. Absolutely. Uh, one of the best. Christian really cleaned that one up, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever was running it before, we won't mention their names because I actually don't remember. Yeah. Um, I think I do remember who it was. It was, yeah. G- it was George Gordon. Yeah. Oh, disaster yeah. of a person. Boo, George Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw him last night at the signs, uh, the Jason Signs benefit that we did oh, here that's in New right. York City. Put, we put his, um, we put the GoFundMe in our in our uh, stories and in our, our profile so as well. So much fun. See everybody again. Yeah, I mean, just catch up. Yeah, George Gordon. I haven't seen in years. Mm-hmm. We're all still young. We still got it. Yeah. Most of us. <laughs> most uh, of us. We're yeah. hanging on. Barely. Some of us are really, we're really, really cl- trying, clinching to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so but, yeah, yeah. Travis uh, is a stand up comic. We've known him uh, for years, and uh, but you born and raised in Columbus. Born and raised in Columbus, baby. 1996, April. 
Uh, I was there at the very first Columbus Crew game in Ohio Stadium. Yeah, and yeah. this is this is what's fascinating is like even in comedy, I I don't know how I, how I would have found out that he was a Columbus Crew fan. Like we what, were, we, we, we were never put in a position to be talking about. We yeah. wouldn't be we wouldn't be out of the closet about our right. MLS yeah. fandom. Yeah, you, know you don't I mean? talk about <laughs> soccer at comedy shows. No, because like, what, then you become the butt of the <laughs> corniest low hanging uh, fruit. <laughs> Yeah, and then you got to explain soccer to all your comedy friends. Yes. They're like, well, why is there 85 minutes left now? And it's like, it's the clock <laughs> counts yeah. up. I'm, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Why this wasn't, was too long. Yeah, why didn't that goal count? I'm like, it's offsides. It's, uh, I'm not I'm just, explaining uh, offsides to anybody. Can't do this. <laughs> Play yeah. FIFA twice. You'll know offsides. Then you'll understand. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so that that's like the the, the cool thing. Once we so, uh, sort of discovered I think we, we discovered it basically when NYCFC started. And Did we, we see you at a game? Yeah. Is that what happened? No, no, we it was before we did that. see you at a game, but before that, we knew you were a part of the whole Columbus Save the Crew thing. Yeah, I think right. I found out because I think you told me. I, I used think, to write about it and tweet about it a lot. I think too, you tweeted like about journalism. it once, and I retweeted it from the Cooligans account. And Christian texted me like, "Wait a minute, who is this? What yeah. is this? What is this about? <laughs> someone <Yeah>. stole <laughs> someone. A Columbus Crew fan hacked into Travis Irvine's yeah, that's account. What happened. Because yeah. you were like for a while, you were working for Jake the Snake." Right? Jake the Snake. I don't know who that is. Jake, weren't you right? You were working for some wrestler. Oh, no. That was, no, I was not. <laughs> I, I were you confusing Weren't him you? With? Who's the guy who does, like, all the conspiracy theory stuff? Oh, Alex Jones? <laughs> no, weren't you, weren't you working for someone? Roger Stone? No. I did James O'Keefe. I don't know who that is. I'm naming every conservative. Who's the guy who was like, look out, people, you got to go to Mexico. Like that guy. He's that's Alex guy. Jones, I thought. No, 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 that's... Uh, no you're thinking of, uh, we starts with a V. What's his name? The guy who was the mayor. Jesse Ventura. Yes. Oh, boy. Sorry. Did you work with him? I sure did, yes. Oh, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> now you're understanding my point earlier. I'm just like, Jake the Snake? <laughs> I don't know wrestlers. Is it mafia? Is that a mafia guy? <laughs> I don't know wrestling, so you know, I'm sorry. The guy you worked the... for Jesse Ventura. I did work for Jesse Ventura. You son Ventura. of a bitch. Yeah, for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, now I know who you mean. What the wrestling guy? What'd you the do with Jesse guy. Ventura? I used to write for him. I used to just write, uh, write his columns. speeches. No, just write columns for his. Uh, he had a show on uh, Aura TV. Now I think he's on RT or something. He's oh, okay. back on TV. Yeah, Remember, yeah, yeah. He had that TV show, Conspiracy Theory, for a long time. Yes, that was yes, a lot yes, of fun. I wish I worked for that one, but yeah. I just kind of wrote columns about, uh, you know, like a millennial perspective to politics, basically. Yeah. Millennial independent perspective. So, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you were also involved in politics. You, you've run for gubernatorial races. Yes. You've run for several. You were a mayor? I you ran for mayor of my hometown. Okay. Um, you can check out that documentary, American Mayor, on Amazon Prime. And then uh, I ran for Congress in 2010. Uh, with the Libertarians, got 3% of the vote. Hubba hubba. All That's right. a good Libertarian right. number. That's right not there. bad. And then last year, I was the gubernatorial candidate uh, for the Libertarians in Ohio. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and this is about how many votes I got. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. we did not do well. It was crazy. It was like, you know, the first midterm election after Trump, so no one was voting for third parties. Yeah. It was like the worst midterm since 1982 for third parties because – it's like, you know, in 1982, you either loved Ronald Reagan or you were terrified of him. And it's kind of the same thing now with Donald Trump. Okay. So um, I did not win. I lost by like two million votes. <laughs> I keep calling for a recount. They're like, <laughs> please stop calling here. Yeah. Um, so what is it? Uh, what got what got you into doing that? Because yeah. obviously you you were you doing only like fringe shit. You like soccer back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Libertarian now. You need yeah. to be running for a U.S. soccer president. That's where. where right. Well, that's why I liked whoever. I think it was Kyle Martino or yeah, somebody. Yeah, Kyle Martino. And say the crew was a big part of his platform and when i ran for governor state the crew was a big part of my platform okay because the the uh, our stadium which of course is the first soccer specific stadium in the united states yeah and already in 20 years it is you know not aged well <laughs> you know everyone's got these new nice ones and uh, well a yankee stadium is pretty nice uh for well, soccer yeah i mean it's a baseball stadium we're, okay oh it's still baseball okay. <laughs> yeah we're that's trying great. you went to the sh you went to city field that's where we saw you. Yes. That oh, was a playoff right. game. That was yeah. a very fun one. Yeah. Yeah. They did City Field and they've done Yankee. I used to go out to the Meadowlands when the, the uh, not the Red Bulls. It was Metro the, Stars. Then there's still the Metro just, Stars. Yeah. I used to go out to that. That was an adventure. You're just like, how many bodies are yeah. still <laughs> in this stadium like, yeah. right now? Somebody told me once that they used to get like 18. I'm like, God, it felt like seven. Mm hmm people not thousands. oh okay. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Seven total yeah. yeah it felt like nobody was there because it's this massive sixty thousand seater yeah and they didn't tarp they were like we're not spending the money on the tarps yeah kid. that's yeah, right yeah. yeah and when the crew first started playing uh they were at ohio stadium at osu and it was like you know it's meant for like a hundred thousand yeah people. we get like 25 which is still pretty good but yeah they had this massive mls tarps that they had 
put up to the show, it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to cover, be like, no, it's it's, it's bu- buttressing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're not allowed to sit there. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. we would have, we could have. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And if people are uh, sort of confused at, at to all these different sort of, I think, roles that Travis might be involved in, you are very much a stand-up co- stand-up comedian and are very funny, and that's that's your sort of main focus. Uh, but you are you do take on these challenges of running for office uh and i and I, i've never a- really asked you this question ever i'm just like really why do you do this yeah, travis right. um well when i ran for mayor of my hometown it was like a legitimate issue i was trying to save um uh, my neighbor's homes um so that's again you can see this in the the documentary american yeah, yeah. mayor on amazon prime it was just you know it's kind of like it's like standing up for your community uh, type deal and by running as you will see in the documentary you can make a difference just by running so uh, you know and i've always been sympathetic to to third parties you know i know i don't want to get too crazy political but it's like even when i was a kid i was like there was ross perot i remember in the 1992 presidential election i was like a third guy and he's fun and he, he's got big ears that's really cool so i was immediately like I, I i'm just very sympathetic to having more options on the ballot so that's why i like the libertarians i like the independents uh, i'll vote green now and then if i'm feeling frisky yeah um, <laughs> he so gets it, real wild with it real wild yeah. yeah so um so you know basically running for governor last year i was asked to do it by the libertarian party of ohio because i had to get three percent to maintain our ballot access I didn't. I got 2%. Um, but uh, either way, there's some legal ambiguity, so we may still have ballot access. But that's what I was fighting for. And it was fun, again, to be literally the biggest Save the Crew candidate. You know, I was yeah, at all yeah. the games. I was giving out Irvine for Governor literature. And then uh, the Republican, Mike DeWine, started talking about Save the Crew because he was the Attorney General. And he filed a lawsuit against MLS to kind of give us more time to save the team. Yeah, so yeah. So it really ended up being kind of a fun thing where it's like, maybe I did, you know, yeah, maybe I, someone in his campaign was like, hey, this kid's taking the Save the Crew vote. Yeah, you, you, you weren't in Columbus at the time, but we did a show in Columbus at the... Uh, I was, the in was in Columbus, and I had another show that night that sucked. That's I wish was. I came and did your show. Yeah, so we were talking like last minute. We're like, wait a minute. We have a friend who's a comedian lives in Columbus and he's doing Save the Crew stuff. We did a whole Save the Crew thing. I know. So we like to joke around and say we saved the crew. You did? You legitimately <laughs> might have. I might have. We all did. That's what's so beautiful about it. Because I remember the last time, literally, last time I was on the show and I was calling in, it had just, the news had just dropped. That was October yeah. 2017. Yeah, that the team might leave. The yeah. fact that we are, you know, a year and a half later and it all worked out is like still <laughs> so crazy. It's still insane. Yeah. The funny thing is, is like I remember. We would watch like the 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 the, the news like the the courthouse feed in in Austin and in yeah. Columbus yeah. and we're like we're watching like people are like there's too much parking spots on and we had to sit through all that right. to get to like this other thing local democracy yeah and it. we're yeah. like bored out of our minds watching this like during the day like we're comedians we don't do anything so we're like eating popcorn watching <laughs> this and I remember thinking like none of this is gonna work it's all pointless I'm one of those I'm like defeated before it starts I'm like guys. We just got to do it illegally. You know what I mean? Start breaking car windows. That's my first thought. <laughs> yeah, right. couple, Riot. Couple of bomb threats. Next thing you know, you get your way. Right. right? I'm, I'm from Newark. I'm not from Columbus. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when we were watching the live feed of the parties, when it happened, when, yeah. when the Haslam news came out. Yeah. And, like, we thought back to, like, all the people we met and all the guys that were in the Save the Crew and all the women and all the lawyers and all the, like, people that were, like, in the way. And you. And I was just like, oh, I'm so happy for these people. Yeah. And it really is, like, I've written about it since. It's, like, it is a nice blueprint for actual, like, activism in a community. Totally. Like, you can, you know, the, the way they essentially formed the core group, held a rally, caught people's attention, started making the signs and the stickers and the tweets and the website and just start spreading out the word. And, you know, every step of the way, you know, when Anthony Precourt was basically saying, I can't keep the team here because of this. And it's like, okay, well, you know, here's 400 businesses that would love to sponsor anything at the stadium. And then, oh, we don't have enough season ticket holders. Well, here's a, we've got to sign up. We have 10,000, yeah. 12,000 people now signed up to buy season tickets. It's a pledge. As soon as the team is sold to local ownership, I will buy season tickets. So, you know, they just countered every single argument along the way, and they, they got it done. And you can't get it done by, you know, without some millionaires in there. And that yeah. was um, <laughs> the beautiful thing about that was Dr. Pete Edwards, who's been the team doctor since day one. He was at that first game. I was at that first game. And it's, it's his family, the Edwards family, that convinced the Haslams to bring in their money as well. 
Um, and now they are like basically co-owners of the team. Oh, that's beautiful! I didn't know that that was the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pete Edwards, and he's a great. Um, he's very active on Twitter now. He's very. Uh, he's like I a s- fun owner. Yeah. He literally like at the rainy game on Saturday, he was like picking up fans in his car and like driving them up to the stadium and then driving. Yeah. You know, so they didn't have to walk in the rain. That's pretty dope. I've yeah. seen I've seen uh, interviews with him, and I didn't like. Uh, I, I think when when we went to Columbus to, to do the show, I think it, it was all. We, you know, we were thinking like, what jokes can we do about right. uh, about this? Because it's like it's easy to make the joke about you going to Austin and all this stuff, and and we made the jokes here and there, uh, but. It, and it, the fans were not having it. <laughs> oh no! But, but, yeah. Oh come on! But, but they it, were enjoying. You it. know what? Yeah, but yeah, the yeah. fact that they were kind of uh, nobody was mad at us, but it was like they it was were just, very resolute. It was like yeah, it was. It, I respected the fact. I, honestly, I left Columbus thinking like I went to Columbus thinking, oh man, we're, let's let's try to cheer these guys up because they're gonna have a rough uh, couple months. Yeah. yeah. And then I I but I left Columbus thinking like, it's not yo, over. this is it. I this seems a little. I think that something could happen here. They they people were. People were so stubbornly saying that this team is not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. For us, it was like, remember Godfather when uh, when Michael uh, sees the Cuban uh, the Cuban dude pull in the soldier and blow his grenade up, oh, right. commit and suicide in the car, realize and he realized like are, yeah. they're actually going to have a ch- they have a chance to win. Like now that I'm here, I'm seeing it. Like we were all laughing about it before. Right, this is serious. That's kind of like what happened to us. We weren't laughing about it, but when we were there. We we're like. They're way more sure that they're going to win than they are worried they're going to lose. And that gave us confidence yeah. to talk about it even more on the show, which we had been covering it a lot. And we were getting a lot of messages. People saying, like, no one's covering it the way you're covering it. And we're like, we're comedians. Right. We shouldn't be the ones covering it this way. <laughs> that's, but that's the nice thing. There's that crossover between comedy and journalism. You know, we all, we're all we all after the truth. Yeah. Right? So you guys played a big part. Everyone did. You know, every media, Alejandro Moreno. Moreno was big. Kyle yeah. Martino, uh, Brian McBride, anyone who has been through Columbus again once you go there once you see the stadium and realize what it means to U.S. soccer you know U.S. soccer's success was vital the road went through Columbus you know first team in MLS first soccer specific stadium home of Dose Cero for you know for years and the years. home of U.S. soccer versus Mexico yeah absolutely yeah. so um I think what a big part of this whole movement and the reason it succeeded was everyone around the world around the country realizing oh the team needs to stay there. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and so yeah, it all worked out. All right, and so you were at at the game uh, this yeah, this uh, weekend. Uh, so much fun against Atlanta United. Columbus. I haven't dried my hair since. <laughs> <laughs> it shows, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at them on YouTube, folks. Yeah. Uh, but Columbus wins this game too. Now Columbus had a pretty good start. A new coach. Uh, what are we thinking think- about Caleb? Um, I'm digging Caleb. You know, he used to Ohio guy. Uh, yeah, a- Akron. Yeah, University of Akron. He turned what are the, the zips, zips, right? Yeah, took him to the national stage multiple times. What um, is that a nickname for? Um, zippers. I imagine zippers. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're making that. Up. I'm making that up. I, I, Akron's z- known for rubber tires. So <laughs> your guess Ohio is, is such mine. a wild place. Man. We really are. We, you Ohio, like if you're like, what was this town? Well, it was created when uh, we decided to make all the steel for the country. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> all the rubber tires in the yeah. world. Yeah, I'd say like, like Ohio's like such an odd place. It was yeah. like factories, and that's it. it yep. I feel like this game. It was a, a weird one to try to figure out any. Tactic, tactical, coaching, anything, because this game was insane. There was so much rain. It was yeah. basically they, played in a puddle. It was, yeah, it was postponed. Yeah, it was basically for, water polo. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. postponed for an hour, uh, right. and and people were like, this game probably shouldn't have, have even been played. There was some controversy at the end uh, in terms of, like, should the game have just been called? Or, yeah. And I guess there's the MLS rule that if you get to the 70th minute and, and it's deemed that the game is unplayable, you can call it final at the 70th yeah. minute. Okay. Um, there's a whole bunch of rules that I don't fully understand. I just had a great time <laughs> sitting in the rain watching the crew win. So uh, that all worked out. I was, I guess towards the end I was worried people would start getting hurt. I think there's some real slippery yeah. tackles and things like that. But it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, when I was a kid, we used to play. That's like, it feels like, for, at least for the first half, it's fun. Yeah. You know? yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they're enjoying it for the first half. <laughs> then after that, they're like, I really can't do my job. You know? Right, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. <laughs> in general how are you feeling about uh the crew this year? I mean they the is this is Jazzy's second season, yeah. right? Uh with them uh yeah. losing Ola Kamara uh, sure. Losing what? Marum going coming and coming back. Yeah, right. That was all last season, though. We, yeah, exactly. we dealt with all that last season. I think the exciting thing is is that it's a new era for us, new ownership, new coach. 
um, new um, business metrics, Tim Bajanko from uh, Toronto, who's also an Ohio guy from Westerville. Yeah, that's right. And so, you know, we have this team back. But what's nice is that in terms of our players, it's the same guys, you know, yeah. um, the same guys we've had for the last few years. Um, Valenzuela uh, is a guy who's out. Um, we just got word today that Harrison Offool um, broke, broke his, his jaw. jaw. So he'll be out for yeah. four to six weeks now. Um, so you know our our flanks are going to need some uh, some backups probably. Yeah. Um, but uh, beyond that, it's it's great. I think the team's still solid. We're still at the top of uh, not you know tip top of East, but we're in contention. It's, it's like DC, Toronto, us, um, yeah. and and Red Bulls. Are Columbus all very always good. finds a way uh, to be consistent, and even without yeah. uh, they're always really really good. Yeah. Even without right. like I, I thought the the transition from Burhalter to Porter would, would be a little bit more uncomfortable. Sure. Uh, but it, it really hasn't looked that way yeah. at all. I think Porter's just trying to embrace the system, add pieces when he can, um, yeah. but just make but sure it keeps working. Zach Steffen uh, already signed, Oof. leaving uh, this summer. Man, uh, what I'm nervous you, about that. Yeah, that's going to be Can a we scary. talk about that? Yeah, we can. Because <laughs> no, we can't. He had so many good saves in that. Like, literally one paw. Right, and yeah. just stopping the ball. The guy is amazing. Like, I'm excited for where his career is going to go, but I'm also like, oh, no, what do we do now? Because <laughs> the one game, you know, we had Joe Bendick, our backup in, um, was Philly, and we lost 3-0. to zero. Yeah, and, it was and just he like, did a lot of that in Orlando. Lose oh, it, really? It. <laughs> Bendick was from Orlando. Oh, yeah. Bendick like Beckham. <laughs> yeah. That's his new Pretty movie, much. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, that's like the, the – so now that um, th th there's that stability back, uh, but now it's not only – that, that, that you're keeping the team, but uh, you're getting a new stadium as well. Uh, right. And wait, so I, I, I don't uh, know Columbus well. What? There's apparently an area where there's just stadiums. Yeah. Um, well, essentially, I mean, Columbus only has, like, you know, we have OSU, which is the, the biggest stadium, the Horseshoe. And then we have uh, the Arena District, which. That's um, what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's where the hockey team plays. That's where the hockey team it's plays. It's like, what, it's a, it's a third division or something like that? No, they are. No, NHL. the Blue Jackets. Yeah, Blue oh. Jackets. They're, okay. they're a real cool. team. Look how yeah, much yeah. he knows about uh, soccer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> about hockey uh, and hockey. Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know hockey. I don't know wrestling. I'm trying my to old, bond with our guests. <laughs> <laughs> my old boss, Jake. Jake the Snake. <laughs> God rest his soul. Um, I assume he's dead. Um, yeah, they all are. Yeah. But no, in, in fact, there, there will be. I'm not sure if it's going to get done. It will get done or it might be done right now. There's a great documentary called Save the Crew, and they outline how this all started because Lamar Hunt, who was the original owner of the Columbus Crew, wanted to build a stadium downtown. And there was a big old rich people fight, basically, that went to yeah. court between this family called the McConnells and then the Hunts and then... Um, and that's why Lamar Hunt settled on the Ohio State Fairgrounds, which is, you know, not ideal to to build a stadium there. But yeah. it was the only option he had. So, you know, when this whole Save the Crew fight started, again, another thing that Anthony Precourt was trying to do is build a stadium downtown. Of course, MLS now is like, if you don't have a stadium downtown, sure. you don't get a team unless it's in Yankee Stadium, and then you're fine. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and which then, is cool. Which is cool. That's fun. Yeah. We like the mounds. It's great. Um, I don't mind half a soccer field. Yeah, yeah, right. I always love watching NYCFC games on TV because it is just like the cameras like at home plate. Yeah, yeah. It's like what a great angle. I don't. It care. looks I like it. like somebody like you're when uh when you put a weird angle in uh in FIFA. You yeah. know what I mean? When you just somebody take, messes. When your you're angle. like, how do you play in this weird camera yeah. angle? But it's like there's some professional player that knows how to play in that yeah. stuff. But it's it looks bad, yeah. uh, especially on TV. Well, and. You know, with our stadium, again, it's it's like, for example, this rain, you know. There's no coverage. There's, there's no nothing. covers. Bit of an erector set. Yeah. Your stadium. Yeah. yeah. That's what they actually. It's like it's like a it's like a high school it's like, like aluminum stands. Yeah. But like on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's just that was the best way they could because Lamar Hunt paid for it himself. There was yeah. no tax money that went into it or anything like that. Um, so now with the new stadium that they're, you know, this is the Haslam's. They're coming in. Um, and they they have they they pull weight they, even yes. in Columbus yes even in okay. Columbus absolutely even more so now I think um, yeah yeah they're heroes they're heroes yeah. I mean um, and now is there not a rivalry with Cleveland though no because we don't have any teams to to play yeah. each other <laughs> yeah. you know the Cincinnati rivalry yeah, is yeah. going to be awesome now obviously uh, the hell is real yeah uh, Derby we yeah. saw the sign we saw the you sign. saw the sign yeah we drove we, from uh, Cincinnati Columbus yeah, <laughs> yeah no <laughs> not the way yours has been open <laughs> okay, good. I'm just saying hell is totally real. Uh, 
<laughs> it's in the middle of Ohio. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Cleveland, uh, they came in. So the Browns and the crew, now there's a nice bond there, which is exciting. I mean, I guess Odell Beckham now, he's coming to, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Sure. He's coming to the Browns, and he's Ugh. also a huge soccer fan. So maybe he'll start popping up at our games. You know, there's so many possibilities. And again, the soccer stadium um, to be built in that kind of. Uh, arena district it is very exciting it's, uh, it's, uh, what it's gonna you, be state-of-the-art you know this is gonna be like top-notch yeah what do you think it's gonna mean for sort of the state of the columbus crew are you, uh, obviously uh, obviously a new and stadium is gonna uh, yeah. attract a lot more attention but what especially as a person you were at the first game right. what does it mean uh to you to, to once keep the team and then have have it's like it's just gonna be another pillar of stability it yeah. just it's gonna mean like they're never going anywhere now you yeah. know unless don garber makes up a new rule <laughs> You need to have a stadium on the top floor of uh, <laughs> penthouse stadiums yeah, only. Yeah, yeah, only penthouse stadiums. And they're like, uh, okay. You know. Yankees are like, well, technically we're <laughs> uh, technically we're you know. so Yankee Stadium counts. I have a question for you. The logo. Sure. I didn't realize it was a point of contention that Precor rebranded the team to Columbus Crew SC. Right, a, a little bit, yeah. And then, and I remember he always hated our logo. It was like just three construction workers. It was workers terrible. With, with hard hats. No, yeah, it was very vague. No, it is. A lot of people always hated the logo. But like some of the fans want that back, or they don't want this round one. I don't. I you know that's fun because I don't care. Um, I'm just happy we have a soccer team. <laughs> so, yeah, think of it. But yeah, but if you could make a choice, would you keep the one they have now, or would you go back to the OG one with the three, the cartoonish one? Um, I gosh. Um, Oof, uh, really put on the spot here. Um, That's what we do. I just want podcast. orange barrels. I just want <laughs> a line of orange barrels. That's what I want our logo to be. And yeah, our color uh, should be orange now. There, I'm changing everything. Yeah, everything yeah. is changing. Alex, no, no, no. Alexis is very, it, like, you know, the presentation, the yeah, pageantry. Yeah. The, marketing the marketing is just, yeah. Yeah. just well, important. I was at the, um, the big branding, uh, rebranding reveal was party. Yeah, I was there. I got Audi, the scarf. Right? Yeah. That was cool. I thought it was all fine. Better I, than Barbasol. And I must say, it wasn't Precor. It was Precor who drove that, but it was locals who designed it. Um, local graphic designers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, so. Columbus is a very hip city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's got it. I remember um, some of, like, a lot of events companies are based out of there. A lot of marketing companies are based out of there. Absolutely. They have, like, they have a very creative sort of uh, groundswell there. Yeah. And so it's a great place to sort of draw some of that interest from. And it's blowing up, especially in terms of, like, again, because I just ran for governor of Ohio, you have so many places that are, our population is leaving. I mean, I think in the next census we'll lose another congressional seat. But Columbus keeps defying all of these metrics. Columbus keeps growing. Um, wages keep going up. More and more businesses. The economy is still good. Uh, they're investing in the city. We, you know, have all these. The teams are staying now. So it's just like, yeah, it's it's a special little place. It's kind of like a hidden gem, you know, in the Midwest that a lot of people don't know about. All right. But this, 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 next this, time you guys come, well, I'll show you around. Yeah, we, we got yeah, actually. We didn't do really get show. to see uh, much of Columbus. We were just in that. What, it's not Liberty. Liberty is in Cincinnati. What's the part the, the where Easton. the Easton, where the yeah. funny bone is? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Which yeah. is like we. I, re I didn't realize so many of these existed in the Midwest. They're like these like fake little cities that are half malls, half cities they're yes. like malls designed to look like a downtown <laughs> like a city yeah 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 i used to work at the east at the pottery barn there at easton oh, okay. oh nice in the, in the stock room Nice. Karen carpets and uh, whatever yeah. else. I yeah, they don't. Too. They don't. They don't put you out front. Travis. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Sorry, Travis. You're, you're not in front the of the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please stay in the back yeah. and scare away the you homeless people. You more than one of the customers. So <laughs> yeah, we're gonna yeah, ask yeah. you to go to the back. All yeah. right. Uh, so, do you know Frankie Hayduk? Yeah, of course. You met he's him? at every. Oh my God, he's at every game. Yeah. Yeah. He wears the glasses. I wear my glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. Always, I don't know if he like knows me or remembers yeah, me. Yeah, but, but We always say hi to each other. Yeah, you do. You do have to be best buds. I feel like the two of you should be skateboarding through town. We we skateboard. All over town together. Yeah, yeah. that you first holding hands. The first home game when you know when we have our mega tailgate, we call it Crewmas, yeah. um, and everyone shows up to do that. Frankie actually jumped on my buddy's RV and did the whole. We're still here. Yeah, it was, just, it was beautiful. Uh, this so. is great. This, you know, it feels like a, a, a little bit like a political ad for Columbus right? uh, when when Travis is on the show. I just made a couple people move to Columbus. <laughs> yeah. All right. So before we wrap the show, we gotta we're gonna we're gonna unveil a, a, a mystery box that. So you've heard of Bug Eaters, right? The team that put our logo on there. Um, Love yeah. Bug Eaters. Playing, uh, they play in Nebraska. Love your Independent logo team. Also. Thank you very much. Okay. So this is. Uh, oh, we, look at that. This is Christians, and we can tell because it's got as my like a picture from. Got Barack <laughs> Obama on it. And that's Barack great. Obama right. okay. and Dom DeLuise. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so. laugh that hard. <laughs> a great, I just haven't heard a good Dom DeLuise reference in a long time. In a minute, right? I okay. miss that guy. Buddy, I bring them out. Yeah. So uh, You have a letter there Wait, this handwritten. Is, no, this is from FCE. This is from... Oh, that was from... from that's a different one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's... All right. 
So this is uh, from Buggy. So By the way, you don't know this. I don't know if you listen to the show. I love nothing more than opening gifts. Oh, yeah. it's the best. Very yeah, much. He has that's a, fantastic. He has Ooh, a, look he has at that. Oh, my God. You guys time. have a scarf. Oh, look at this. Okay. More than one scarf, actually. All right. So it's from Buggy. Just shout out to Bug Eaters. Uh, our, our partner... Our partner club, our sister club. That's right. Uh, oh, that, that's our development academy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Shout. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, you, what, what you, what do you have? Alexis? I have the one. It's a scarf. It's a black, black scarf that says Bug Eaters FC. Really nicely designed. And the red tractor. And the red tractor. The, the red and white side. stripes on the other side. Okay. I have two of these. Maybe I might have taken one of yours. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here you go. All right. So I have, and I have. Uh, oh, it's the same scarf. Okay. Cool. Same scarf. So. And you know what? I would gift mine to Travis Irvine. Yeah, give it Thank to Travis. Yes, so I know. Oh, That's awesome. rep the bug eaters. All right. Yeah. Well, I will wear this. I will rep and wear farm to pitch. That's farm their to whole pitch. thing. That's me from bugs to mouths. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the other. They didn't go with that marketing. The okay. This. Oh, this. The, oh, I almost fell off my chair. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. He's so, so excited. This is. Oh, this is with the number. So this is uh, the uh, the bug eaters kit with our uh, logo on the sleeve. Amazing. You Thank see you. That? They added our logo to the sleeve. You see that there, Travis? Beautiful. <laughs> Not bad. And then I've got the Bug Eaters FC black t shirt. Very nice, very classy, right? Just the logo on it. Amazing. Oh, we got a beanie. I got a beanie. I'm not putting it on my hair because I have product. <laughs> but I also have this t shirt here. It's just the state of Nebraska with Bug Eaters FC on it. They rep hard for Nebraska. That's a dope shirt. That is a dope shirt. And then uh, over here. A lot of double XLs happening over here. <laughs> I got the, the tractor over here, the Bug Eaters track with the soccer ball in the inside the tractor. This is uh, amazing. So, yeah, Bug so Eaters. They have these mystery kits that these go out. So you could get one of these things. Well, it's a mystery box, not a mystery kit. Sorry, it's a mystery box. So you don't know what you're going to get inside. You can get one of Travis. Is scarves, right? <laughs> you can get one of these dope t-shirts. You, you can get, get a, a, jersey. a jersey. I didn't get a jersey. I gotta have a little talk with a the owner. Anything could happen. Oh, wow, right? look at that. Well, this is beautiful. Oh, amazing. All right, so uh thank you, uh Bug Eaters. This is beautiful. Look at this beanie. It's a high quality beanie. <laughs> <laughs> it looks it, it's a, it's amazing stuff. So go to bugeatersfc.com uh, and uh and get a mystery box so you can uh who knows what you're gonna get. Oh, wait, this is stitched on. This is not just like some bad no quality, know. the quality is dope. Quality is dope. This is fire. I mean Jonathan Kalor only does great things. Exactly. That's man. the owner. Great dude. Check out Backswing Brewing uh, Company when you're out there. He's also going to have a, his own beer, line of beer that he's coming out for the team and everything. It's going to be dope. Guys, if you're in Nebraska, check out Bug Eaters FC. Come on, you tractors. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> what a great, yeah. If that's not the, <laughs> that may not the be, It feels fun Come to on, say. you tractors. <laughs> Come on, you tractors. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so thank you again for listening to the show. We always appreciate it. Make sure, uh, Travis, how do people follow you and, and keep up and vote for you in the next election, possibly? Well, I'm never running for office ever again. <laughs> I'm going to wear this beard uh, on well, my you, face you've, forever. You've already saved the crew. You are done. Right? I think you, you, did you don't your need job. to run anymore. I saved my neighbor's homes when I ran for mayor. I there saved the crew when I ran for governor. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm lo I've, if you win uh, by losing. Is that you win sense? by losing? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Addition by subtraction. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, Travis Irvine USA on Twitter. And uh, of course, uh, American Mayors on Amazon Prime. And uh, my comedy album, Guy from Ohio, is available on Spotify, iTunes, and Amazon. And there are Columbus Crew jokes on there, actually. All right. Okay. So make sure you listen to that. Especially we, we have people who listen on Spotify. So just go search for Travis Irvine, uh, Guy from Ohio. Guy from uh, Ohio. I, and check that out. So, uh, Travis, we usually wrap this show by yelling the Kooligans into the screen. You'll know exactly why. You'll, you'll know exactly what to do. Uh, so, for Travis Irvine, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And together, what are we? The Cooligans! What's up? It's the world champion, Judah Friedlander, and you're watching the Cooligans. Why? Because you're cool. This is what winners look like right here, man. I mean, you're looking at us. Right now with my legs, I just juggled the ball 80,000 times. <laughs> you missed it. Yeah. He's been playing keepy-uppy since I met him. Yep, look faster, guys. <laughs> Go Team USA. <laughs>